do a cheers to the Sobeys and Shaper Liquid Beer of the Week podcast. The Nine Nose, we ride again. <laughs> I love you guys. Careful. That takes off. What's going on, everybody? Thank you very much for being here. Joining Dusty and Lieutenant Eric and YouTube Trev from the Popeye's Louisiana Kitchen Studio. Buffalo Chicken Wrap, now available. Buffalo Poutine, now available. Oh, baby. Uh, and some other exciting things coming. I don't know if I can I don't know if I can say it, but I was texting with uh, Popeye, one of the Popeye's boys yesterday. And they got something else cooking, coming in mid-May. They always got something I going know, on. I know, I know. I know. So it's... Uh, Exciting times, exciting times. That is for sure. Who's this? Who's this Belineski, you silly boy? A thousand likes before 7 a.m. Or else I will talk nonstop and caps the whole time. Highly unlikely, but thanks for the support. Who are you, Joel Lavoie? <laughs> <laughs> with, with that being said, we do have to have a discussion about the likes because, I mean, we almost, by the end of like yesterday's viewing, that video had 700 likes, almost seven, 691, almost 700 likes. 691. We're not going to push for like 700 likes on the live show. Like we said, we got the streak now. The new standard is 400. Um, but just for comparison purposes yesterday, because, you know, YouTube travels over there in the corner, full-blown Vince McMahon meme. Every time we hit another 100 likes, he's like, oh, my God, 500 likes. Um, I went and looked yesterday, and Pat McAfee, McAfee shows huge. He's a monster. It's just a monster. 72,000 views or something like that yesterday for the one that I looked at for McAfee. 1,300 likes. So his his like rate was like 1.7%. Our like rate yesterday was 17%. And the show ended up getting like 4,000 views. So your likes do help big time. So let's hammer, let's hammer that thumbs up, man. All you have to do, like you don't know how much just one thumbs up actually helps us around here. So hammer the likes, smash the likes. I we could hit we hit two hundred before seven o'clock yesterday. There's no reason we can't do it again. And if we do it again, I'll play whatever the hell you want out of the old uh, vault. We're not we're not scared of anything. Play whatever you want. Check in, get conched. There you go. Hey, six o'clockers, check it. You know what? <laughs> RCN had the old uh, the old I, tune going in the nasty. Show. I'm almost ready to take Money Money for a run. We took the sense and, and speed just, remix and just for see a run, what happens. Right? Yeah. I mean, one of the big things is a lot of the copyright stuff is, uh, from what we've seen at least, is like if you monetize your channel, then then you know it's a uh, it's it's a much bigger spotlight type of thing. But we haven't like 
clicked on the monetize channel button yet. yet. So <laughs> I uh, I don't know. I think I think we might be able to get away with a money money at some point. Just say just Ask throwing it out for there. forgiveness afterwards. Just just throwing it out there. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so anyway, hammer the thumbs up for us. It just pushes the video to more people. End of story. So uh, if you like the content, uh, hammer the thumbs up for us. Let's crush 200 before 7 o'clock. Set the tone. Set the feel early. That would be big. Because it's a game day. Oilers and Coyotes tonight. Good. I mean, with all the timing of uh, what's going on with the Coyotes right now, it is hilarious that they're here. So that's going to be fun. Yeah. Tales of the North is going to be uh, excellent today. I saw Coyote this morning in the alley driving. Was it a fox was or was it a, it a coyote? Premonition. No, it was a coyote. Remember because I said I saw that fox. Nature's joker, if you will. <laughs> uh, but no, it was, it was a big one. It was, it was feasting on some trash. But uh, yeah, a little bit of a mangy coyote coming into town tonight. Would you not say in the uh, well, Arizona, I, I, Utah, whatever it is. That's not even a slight because I'm pretty sure all coyotes are mangy. Some like, have pretty thick, milky Nice coats and what's the stuff? deal? What's the deal with coyotes in general? Scavengers, like dogs that just weren't, weren't didn't have a home. Like they're not a wolf. They're Nature, not a fox. nature's joke. Yeah, like <laughs> I almost genuinely feel bad for the coyote in general. Nobody likes you. Nobody's ever fascinated by. Like somebody will see a fox and you'll be like, Oh, look, they're so look cute. At that fox. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll everybody, feed it. And everybody it'll... sees a coyote and like you're not scared of it. You're not impressed by it? You're just like, oh, the coyote. Maybe that's why they're so ornery. Maybe you, that you, is you why. You grow up your whole life. It's in your DNA that everybody hates you and nobody likes you. And then, could I, could I say that, am I taking it too far by claiming that the coyote is the Rodney Dangerfield of the dog type family? I guess we're just figuring this out. The best nickname for this franchise. Yeah. Nobody likes them. Nobody cares Everybody about them, them, and nobody cares about and the animal that they're right named now. after. Yeah, so it's... that's a tough one. <laughs> yeah. That's a tough one. And they're one. a bit of a joke. T. Wilson says, coyotes hunt boys, but they do scavenge as well. Yeah, but coy- yeah. I'd rather have my team named elk than coyote. Bingo. Uh, yes. You, you put those two beasts in a match? Who's gonna, like, I mean, I'll me- say right now, if I, was, if I was out in the wilderness. Night, night, coyote. And I ran into a... Uh, uh, a big bull elk who was angry about There's something. Saliva going Or one of those it. stupid little coyotes. In the rut. A coyote <laughs> can run up to me. I'll just kick it in the face. <laughs> sure. What are you supposed to do with one of those elks? They come at you and you grab their horn. You try to like wrestle them down? Good luck. Please. Elk is by far more fierce. It's far more fierce. Do you think a coyote helps, hunts an elk? No chance. It's, it's no busy, chance. Too busy eating a cat. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Like what does a coyote hunt? Gophers? Cool. Meet Congratulations. That pe- meet that rich people leaving the River Valley for them. I don't, I've seen it. What? I, I've seen Rich little, people leave meat? Well, there, there, are, there are people in yards, and I'm not going to uh, wow. give out is numerical Darryl addresses Cates? this morning. Is it Daryl Cates? Is Daryl Cates feeding coyotes? <laughs> well, he is an owner of an NHL team, and you Wagyu can see steaks. that the league has been feeding coyotes for years and years ah, and years. That's a good point. So maybe, yeah, you can kind of sum all this up. Uh, yeah. Anyway. Uh, They're here tonight. Coyotes are stupid, too. Like they used to try to, to, to they used to try to kill our calves. Yeah. Right? And then yeah. And then my dad would just shoot them. He figured it out. And it'd be like, You're so stupid. Like, if you come down here, you're going to get killed. Go hunt some other stupid little animal. And I don't got a lot of time for the coyote in case you're uh, in case you're wondering. Hey, coyote never really did anything to me. But it's just like whatever. But you gotta make sure that you you, you let them know that we hate them. Like that they're getting a little too uh, friendly. Yeah. Like I rolled down my window this morning and I screamed. You did? Yeah. Get out of here! At, at 5.15 in the morning. You, is that what you did? <laughs> did you do a bear growl? Did you <laughs> unroll your window? Go, nah. <laughs> Drive by bear growl at 5.15 a.m. <laughs> Give me one of those. Uh, that's pretty good. Uh, all right. Uh, you can text us anytime. Paris Euler's inbox. 780-218-9999. 780-218-9999. To get into the old PJ's inbox today, you're looking at 22 locations across the country. Family, Canadian-owned, flexible financing options. You do not have to pay. Well, not ever. <laughs> you do not have to pay until no, no, 2025. No, you don't have like, to pay and then put the rest in the fine print that, at the bottom. Wouldn't that be something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Paris Jewelers, why yeah. not get married? It's the ring box. It's the bling box. It's the Paris Jewelers in box. And they got lots of fancy uh, shiny things. Look at this, look at that. Not just for the ladies. They got jewelry for men, too. The ring box, the bling box. It's the Paris Jewelers in box. Ooh, la, la. 
Oh, it is the Paris Jewelers inbox, isn't it? 780-218-9999. If you need a conch request over there, you know, just to follow up on the coyotes, like the the animal, the coyote, probably peaked if you're looking at what the height of the coyote movement was with Wild E, right? Wild E coyote. Yeah. Really puts you on a good sort of path in the coyote industry. Kind of had the pop, the pop culture. Yeah, uh, but then you have the Arizona coyotes set you back who literally haven't done anything they brought back the coyote name for 30 years now and then the actual real life coyotes do nothing either like wildy coyote is lebron james on like the 2007 Cavs team he drugged to the finals with like ilgoskis and gooden like that's <laughs> wow. that's what wildy coyote is in the old coyote picture maybe just an old-fashioned rebrand yeah. and you go to a jackal or something hey wildy coyote clayton keller Nothing else. I mean, that's that's about it. <laughs> that's uh, that's a tough one. That's uh, a tough one. Seven eight zero two eight eight ninety nine ninety nine. Hit us up in the uh, nasty chat this morning as well. If you're watching over on YouTube, we're already at eighty likes. Let's go smash that thing. We can continue to build this thing up. And uh, Trev, let's go back to YouTube. Trev, who's talked about this in the seven o'clock hour and the eight o'clock hour. Yep. Not sure necessarily he's got into it in the six o'clock hour, but uh, Trev. The 4,000 views on the show yesterday being more than we've had probably in about like three, four, five weeks. Is that directly correlated to our thumbs up yesterday? Yes, it absolutely is, Dusty. What? I'm saying I'm saying it here. Yes, here and now. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. I, I said it an hour or two and three of, of the show the last few days, but uh, liking, it goes a long way with uh, the YouTube algorithm. The more you like, the more YouTube will be like, hey, like the people are liking this content. So we might like it too. Yeah, we're going to we're going to continue to push this uh, through browse features and whatnot. So you'll be seeing it. It'll be recommended a lot more afterwards as well, um, oh. not just during the show. And, uh, and not only that, like if you're just scrolling by a video and you're like, wow, like this has almost 700 likes, that, that, that's something I, I forgot to mention. Out. Yeah, that, like that's uh, a little bit more to it. So, yeah, you're a little bit more interested. But, yeah, it goes a long way and uh, it's, it's pretty sweet. But, uh, I, like, it's impressive. I like uh, the industry standard. If you have like six percent like likes uh, for views, yeah, yeah. and we we're chugging along at sixteen, we were, we were at like six, sixteen, seventeen. Like that's so, yeah. really impressive. So uh, uh, right. it's it's yeah, we set a new standard here, boys. So we're beyond industry standard. Yeah, by a lot, ladies and gentlemen. YouTube Trev, let's go. YouTube Trev, laying it out there. That's the uh, that's the business right there. So hammer the thumbs up, I guess, is what we're uh, what we're saying. Uh, let me lay out the show for you today. Then we'll uh, die. We got a good one here. We got a good one. It's not like jam packed with guests. So we can have the time to cook today on a few different things. Obviously, time for your text messages if you need a contra request. Seven eight zero two one eight ninety nine ninety nine. One of your text messages today will win the uh, the text of the day for A and W. The deal on these juicy mamas uh, wraps up. On Sunday. So you got to get in on this right now over at A&W. This is such a good question. What's better than one A&W Mama Burger made with perfectly seasoned grass-fed beef patty topped with pickle sliced onion, ketchup, mustard, teen sauce, served on toasted sesame seed bun? Two of them. Two of them is definitely better than one. $9.99 at participating A&W restaurants in Edmonton, St. Albert, Sherwood Park, and Devon. What a deal. And to make it even more convenient, most A&W drive throughs are open for 24 hours. So that's a nice little bonus. Anytime. So keep those text messages rolling, and let's give that pox uh, a good old pounding today. Uh, we'll get to your morning announcements coming up. Tales of the North to get you set for the Oilers and Coyotes tonight. Tomorrow is National Hockey Card Day, and Wayne Sports Cards, they're getting ready. They are, they're blowing up their balloons. It's going to be a great time. They're, there's going to be like over 1,000 people. It's a card of In and out of the yeah, doors. yeah. yeah. At Wayne's tomorrow, which is uh, which is just insane. But they get the lines moving. That place is circulating. Well, they, they, it's they like, cruise. Uh, you know, it's mind you, you do want to go in there and linger. Like nobody wants to walk into Wayne's like it's a bloody soup Nazi and be like, one box, Upper Deck Series Two, please, and then move over to the other line. Like, and, come on. And Wayne or or Chase, uh, they'll uh, they, they don't exactly handle it like that. But it is one of those things where once you're in, you're like, okay, I got like. Oh, yeah. Let's get going. And then you kind of like, and then you black out, and then you're done, and you walk out with a bunch of stuff. Yeah. You're like, what did I get? <laughs> Uh, this is what we're going to get into today. This is actually a complete box set. So I don't even know if, the, I don't know if there's packs in here and you just, or it's just a set, but there's also look for a possible rare autograph card. This is a 23, 24 NHL star rookies little thing here. So I hope there's, we're going to get into that in the, in the plastic mold. Yeah, I think it's probably just the set. Yeah, like, yeah. so anyway, we're going to get into that a little bit later on today. They will have those uh, national hockey card day sets. Uh, tomorrow for free, so you go into Wayne's and uh, they'll be dishing out the National Hockey Card Day sets. T- take your kids down there tomorrow. They'll have, or if you're an adult, take an adult friend 
with you and uh, head on down to Wayne's. We'll crack some packs here around 6.45 today. Mike Johnson, MJ, he's going to pop by just after uh, 7 o'clock this morning. We'll get his thoughts on the Oilers and Coyotes, the future of the Oilers this season, the future of the Coyotes next season. Sidney Crosby moving into the uh, top 10 all-time in scores, 10th all-time in points, passing Esposito. Only three guys in the top 10 made the top 10 on just one team in their entire career. Sid is one of those for now. We'll see what ends up happening. The fact that he's got the Penguins kind of buzzing a little bit right now makes me feel like he's just going to ride that thing out the rest of the way with Pittsburgh. Um, the other two, Super Mario and Ron Francis. Stevie Iserman. Stevie Iserman, Mario Lemieux, Sidney Crosby, only three guys in the top ten to, uh, to have spent their entire career with one AHL team. Pretty nice. Uh, cool bet hotline today around 7.20. Today, we had Penguins in regulation last night. They needed overtime. And you know what really pissed me off is on the lock shop yesterday, I did say, you know, I'm on the Penguins in regulation. But this is a huge game for both of these teams. You might want to sprinkle overtime. And then I never sprinkled overtime myself, mm. which really kind of major buzzkill. Major buzzkill. It's a uh, lesson, though. You Moving think so? Forward. Yeah. Well, you, you, know, you said you'd do it. Always you sprinkle overtime. Make ASO. sure double check your sprinkle. Uh, Vegas keyword. If you want to qualify to win a trip to Vegas, hammer the thumbs up right now because that's what we're doing. We're giving away a trip to Vegas. Your keyword today, 745 this morning. What's old Mr. Mr. Wordbird got for us today? Oh, it's a long one. Not a bad one, though. I like this one. Yeah, there is one of those in Vegas. So that'll be your, uh, that'll be your keyword today. <laughs> Man, good, timely one for the lock shop today, I'd say. Whoa! <laughs> Jeez! Can you imagine when I say that word? I mean, as in, <laughs> and can you please use it in a sentence? I guess. I can't wait. <laughs> so we'll get to that today on the Lock Shop. Four chances to qualify for the EST Flyway today. Nielsen Show, Hangout. Are you in the Hangout today? Two hours. Two hours on the Hangout today. You got it. Ooh, double dose of LTE. <clears throat> yeah. You got it like that. Mm, after uh, your beer of the week. <laughs> oh, it's going to be good. You're going to keep, keep those white claws flowing over there. Oh, today. yeah. Like the, uh, it's, uh, we're going to send Lieutenant Eric home in a cab at noon today. It's going to be great. Can't wait. Um, <laughs> cool bit hotline. I says pardon. I says pardon. We got to... We might dabble in it a little bit prior to, but I says pardon today will 100% be the details coming out on Otani's degenerate. Like, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if Otani's interpreter has a handle and is in the degen den over on our Discord. I, I wouldn't be surprised if most people, when they saw that, says I says pardon. When, when, That's you, exactly you what saw I said. all those numbers and everything. That, that was exactly the thing. As soon as you saw pardon? those numbers, $180 million in losses, Wait. you're like, I says pardon? Yeah. What? So we'll get into must, that. Must have forgot the sprinkle on overtime or something. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's, My God. Yikes. As somebody re replied to me yesterday, said, Dusty, this guy should be watching the lock I shot. know. I'm like, I know, <laughs> if man. If only he would have known. Eh? Or even for the messaging. Cool bet. Stay cool. <laughs> bet responsibly. Nobody or like we used to do with the Nobody crack ever pack. told him. <laughs> know your limit. Crack within it. If somebody would have told him to bet responsibly, yeah. we would have never been in this situation. I had no idea. <laughs> Holy smokes, That'd be this a hell guy. of a defense, eh? To bring to Unbelievable. <laughs> kind of easy trivia. Just after 8 o'clock today, three questions too many for Park Mazda. We'll get to your orange and blue breakfast around 8.20 today. The uh, third hour of the show is a little bit jammed. Orange and blue breakfast from Mobile One and Blue Water Lubricants and Blue Water Group. Uh, that's coming up around 8.20. Mm, that's good for Italian Center Shop. Pick up a Panino today. And then Sobeys and Safer Liquor Beer of the Week around 8.40 today. Old Red Beard will uh, be joining us for that one. So we got we got a real real nice Friday show for you. A yeah. little bit of a little bit of wiggle room here in the six o'clock hour. Um especially in the second half of the six o'clock hour. So if uh if you want to hit up hit up the vault, you got your suggestions. Three eighty five. Fire them over. Number three eight five. We haven't done that in a long time because I, I, love I that don't game, think man. I have the access yeah, okay. to that one. I, I I don't know if Maddie ever flipped because he flipped that around a bit. It's the Wi Fi. I think it's in a is it on a different Wi Fi thing? Right, I, I, I mean, nobody knows. Nah. But what I do know is that I do have this little USB thing over here that has, like, the whole vault. Good enough. So whatever clips you have. We said if we get to 200 likes by 7 o'clock today, the vault is open. Let us know what you want if we get there. We're already over 100. We're probably going to get there. So hammer the thumbs up, and we'll unlock something special like for you. you opening a big vault, and then all the nasties running it. Shoot, shoot. Like, Come on in. Have you ever opened up a vault? Uh, like a real big bank one with the yeah. No, me neither. The small uh -huh. ones with the uh, 
you know, the have you done that before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the, that personal the turning, uh, the safe, like one. a safe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've opened up a personal safe? Yeah. Well, that, that wasn't mine. Oh. It was buddies, but I don't, I don't, heavy, think, I don't know if I've safe. ever opened up a personal safe. Heavy, he- real heavy. What I want to do is try to crack a personal safe. Like in the Italian with, job. With the stethoscope and everything? Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's, uh, <laughs> like in the Italian. Yeah, with Charlize Theron. <laughs> that's what I want to do. Yeah. You'd, uh, be, you'd be a regular wild E. Coyote if that was the say, case. Yeah, he used to get those safes dropped on him all the time. Sure, sure. That poor guy. <laughs> then that he'd a, open it from the inside. That was it. <laughs> Man, that was those are good. I used to love watching that stuff. Well, it was a slice of life. Him and yeah. the dog, they go to work, you know. Hey, Sam, you know, and and then when when the work is over, they're friends again. You know, that's, yeah. that's just how life is. <laughs> yeah, that was a good. I remember. All right, let's get into your morning announcements here for one hundred point three. The Bear Emmons' yeah. best rock. <laughs> Ding, ding, ding. Uh, this is a good one from Strummy over in the Nasty Chat. Guys, $180 million in losses. I don't remember him here. I don't remember hearing that he went to an Oilers game. <laughs> it's a little pricey. It's a little pricey to get down to the rink. Strummy, that's pretty good, dude. You probably text that in. Text that in at 780-208-9999. Might, uh, might, get, you in the, uh, might get you in the mix. Uh, Northside Sandwich says, someone should have invited that interpreter to the EST Discord so he could have been in the DJ den. Probably would have helped him win at least a bit. That's the thing. Like I said, I, I thought he probably has some sort of secret identity in there anyway, trying to recover. With that much, I'm sure he's got secret identities around the world. That's strummy text. Uh, not a text, but he got to text that in. That's that's two gold. That's uh, that's real good. That is that is pretty good. Let's keep rolling with those. 780-218-9999. 780-218-99. Keep pounding that, uh, that box this morning. Uh, NHL action last night. It was a busy night in the NHL last night. Obviously, Rick will have these for you as we work our way through some sports updates today as well. We'll take a look at this Masters leaderboard right now. But some big games last night. Washington Capitals, man. They've lost seven of eight, including last night, four to two in Buffalo at the hands of the Sabres. The Islanders. With a huge win last night mm-hmm. in overtime. Islanders 3-2 over the uh, Habs. Austin Matthews creep, creep, creep towards 70 goals. 67 and 68 last night. Has 50 goals in regulation this year, which is rather remarkable. Three games left for Toronto. They're at home to the Wings tomorrow. Right. Visit the Panthers Tuesday and round it out in Tampa on Wednesday. Did you say they're at home to the Wings tomorrow? I wonder if he gets it done Saturday night, hockey night, night in Canada. Yeah. Original six v original. I'll probably six. be betting Matthews over one and a half goals last night, just to try to take advantage of this a little bit. Uh, but they, uh, the Leafs lose six five to the uh, to the Devils. Philadelphia Flyers. I don't know if they can pull it off, but big win last night for them they're, in New York. They're just hanging around, hey. Yeah, like, oh, all right, you torts. We already know this spot isn't anything in. Like, why do you even need to? You were there. You had some time in that third spot. Just. You know, like sometimes Beat when the you're Rangers. like Tortorella, you're kind of entertained by him. I don't, I don't need like the NHL playoffs doesn't need Tortorella being a smart ass with the media this year. Like, there's enough good storylines. Like, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to turn on like Sports Center after a night of playoff hockey and there's three amazing games, but people are like, you have to hear what Tort said. Like, I just no thanks, not this year. Like, go away, Philly. Don't worry about it. Come back another year. Uh, the Pittsburgh Penguins, 6-5. That was wild. They were up 4-2 in that one. I was watching a pretty good chunk of that game. Um, and the Penguins end up winning it in overtime as well. Panthers rolled over the Blue Jackets. Winnipeg, Dallas, the other is. Uh, Los Angeles won last night in that little battle to see who the Oilers play in the, uh, in the first round. Los Angeles have been playing well lately. They took care of business 4-1 against the Flames last night. But how about the Winnipeg Jets? Oh. The Winnipeg Jets roll into Dallas, and they had a bit of a shut out the stars with prior LB. to this trip, right? Like they were they were floundering a bit themselves. Yeah, here's the uh, Minnesota or uh, Winnipeg has now won five in a row. Prior to that, this is this is quite the twist, isn't it? Hey, they had lost six in a row. Now they've won five in a row, including three on a road trip. A road trip that wraps up Saturday in Colorado. Against the Avs. As I think, as Huss said, the final boss. Playoff preview. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, they beat the Kings 4-3. They beat the Flames 5-2. Then they went on the road, beat the Wild 4-2, beat the Preds 4-3 in overtime. And then last night, I believe they call it a tidy victory. 3 nothing win 
in Dallas against the red-hot Dallas Stars. So the Winnipeg Jets, a team to be reckoned with come postseason. Get into the schedule, too. Return home, get the Kraken on Tuesday, then finish it up strong against Vancouver Thursday. But uh, they're getting streaky, hey? Talk about streaks. That's one of them right there. All right, and then we've got the Masters. I uh, I dabble in quite a bit Masters Thursday. Ended up hanging out with my buddy for about two and a half hours. Ha, okay, yeah. It was good. Walk good us hang. through the afternoon. Good a couple yeah, of yeah. beers. Okay, yeah. A couple uh, of some beers. Some wings, you said. We're on the uh, menu. I had, had, some, had some wings. Had some wings. Had some honey Pimento garlic. Pimento cheese sandwich? No, no. Honey garlic wings. Uh, it wasn't bad. And we watched, uh, yeah, we watched about two and a half hours and had to get back to our lives. But it was... Uh, <laughs> you shook hands. You said, it was good. see you next yeah, year. And then yeah, and then I yeah, I did. It's been a pleasure. Uh, I'll see you 365 days from now. A tradition unlike any other. Um, and then I watched a little bit of it on like the, the replay last night. So I probably consumed about three, three and a half hours of Masters coverage yesterday, which is pretty good. Bryson DeChambeau, seven under to open up. I mean, usually, we're probably thinking, like usually it's in that 11 to 13 range to win it. Maybe this year it ends up being around 15. This dude's already at 700. Now, he went off in the morning. He's going to go off in the afternoon. Might be a little bit more difficult for him today. I could see him finishing today around the 7 under, 8 under, 6 under. Like some, I don't think he's going super low again. Uh, but Scotty Scheffler, this dude, I mean, plus 475 to win the entire thing. Shortest odds we've seen to win a Masters in like 20 years. And here he is. Like six under. Scotty Scheffler's going to win this thing. Well, put some put some respect on Nikolai Holgaard as well as we do have somebody on the nasty chat checking in from uh, Vorbasse, Denmark. Come on. So, uh, Great Danes here at the Masters and in the nasty chat. Vorbasse? I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. V-O-R-B-A-S-S-E. Oh, I almost spelt it right. Vorbasse. Vorbasse. I put S-S-A at the end. Yeah, but uh, uh, my family's from Denmark. So, shout out Denmark. Well, there you go. My uh, My grandpa's from Denmark. That's pretty exciting, isn't it? <laughs> wow, I wonder if we're related. Uh, if you're watching from Denmark today, please hammer the thumbs up. I heard thumbs up from Denmark translate to three over here. So let's hit that thing today. Go Holgard. Yeah, I look. Not, well, no, but it's a great you, story. Yeah, you mentioned DeChambeau, too, and Scheffler right behind him, but. I don't necessarily see I Holgard know. around on the, like on Sunday, but you could. Max Homa. Max Homa's kind of. I've got money on so many guys, I don't have any money on. DeChambeau. But at least it's I'm not like, him sitting there and then the rest at one on Yeah, no, you no. Know, I, still, I like that it's a bit uh, layered. They're certainly uh, yeah. in the mix. Danny Willett, who's won it before, he was four under. Yeah. Play was suspended. Uh, so they're going to have to pick things back up here this morning. It looks like the weather's going to be fine. Corey Connors, the Canadian T8, two under. And uh, Tiger, I believe, not done his first round just yet, but he's T17. He was T17 last night. Where's Tiger? He's oh, T30 now. Oh, he gave one back. He was, he was oh, one under oh, when I saw oh. last uh, all right, so there you go. We'll keep you up to date. Those guys are going to be, I think some guys are hitting the course right now. So we'll yep. get that uh, Masters leaderboard up and continue to hit it as we work our way through the show this morning. Brilando is in, and like Brilando, I mentioned, we're going to get to this during I says pardon, but Brilando says, imagine being so rich that you can lose $180 million, and the only reason you find out is because of the U.S. government. Yeah, that's well. We'll get into yeah. the we'll get into this whole thing. Not a lot of people on the face of this earth can say they they reside in that tax bracket. <laughs> hey, <laughs> like that is that's that's insane. It's ridiculous. I replied, it's amazingly depressing. It, it, yeah, it's crazy. I says pardon seven forty five today. A deeper dive on Otani's interpreter Ipe. We'll uh, we'll get into that. Tales of the North on the other side here. Oilers. And the Coyotes. We're going to crack some packs coming up as well. What do you like? I would. So McDavid's still day to day. If you're day to day, you don't play the Coyotes. That's, That's a rule. That's kind if, of what you're, it means. if you're day to day, you don't play the Coyotes on the first half of a back to back. Not in mid April. No, no chance. <laughs> no, not a reason. There's no chance he could step on the ice tonight. That would be insane. So and they still take care of business here tonight, I think even without them. But your thoughts on the Oilers and Coyotes tonight, hammer those over. And I know there was an excellent discussion in the city yesterday on Dylan Holloway or Matias Janmark. Uh, so we can dive into that a little bit here in the 6 o'clock hour today as well, if you uh, if you choose to. Uh, 780-218-9999. 780-218-9999. We got Tales of the North coming up here on the other side. 130 likes. Cruising towards 200. Let's hit that. Vault will be open around 650 today. I, I have so much confidence that you guys are going to hit 200 likes before 7 o'clock 
that you can start sending in what you would like us to play from the vault so I can actually track it down. 780-218-9999 or over on YouTube, obviously. And we'll put this Var- Barbosa Denmark on the map. We'll definitely map that bad boy. Yeah, today. uh Vobasa, somebody said Vobasa. Jube Jube said Vobasa. Vobasa uh, Denmark. Put it on the map. The big V. Let's get to a sports update with LTE. Here we go. Austin Matthews scoring twice to reach 68 goals as the Leafs lost to the Devils 6-5. Sidney Crosby is the 1,000th assist to Eric Carlson in overtime lifting the Penguins over Detroit 6-5. Jets shutting up the Stars 3-0. Lauren Francois 24 saves. Islanders winning in overtime 3-2 over Montreal and the Kings skating to a 4-1 victory over the Flames. Oilers and Coyotes tonight from Rogers Place. Tom Gazzola will get you set. He'll have your oil stream pregame show alongside YouTube Trev starting at 5.30 Right here on Edmonton Sports Talk, the TuneIn and iHeartRadio apps. And on YouTube, Edmonton enter play four points back of the Canucks for tops in the Pacific with two games in hand. It's one of five games around the NHL later tonight. Bryson DeChambeau topped the leaderboard at 7-under with Scotty Scheffler hot on his heels at 6-under at the Masters. Corey Connors, the low Canadian, tied for ninth at 2-under. Second round action is currently underway. Toronto Blue Jays' homestand continues tonight. They welcome in the Rockies to begin a three-game set. Jays will send Kevin Gosman to that mound. First pitch, 5.07 Mountain Time. Raptors visit the Heat tonight. One of five games, 15 games around the NBA. Back over to hockey where Canada skated to a 5-1 victory over Sweden. Quarterfinals action at the Women's World Hockey Championships. Canada will take on Czechia in the semis tomorrow. In game one of the AJHL finals goes tonight from White Court between the Wolverines and Calgary Canucks. Puck drop at 7 from JDA Plays. Game 2 will go tomorrow night before the series Shifts back to Calgary for games three and four Tuesday and Wednesday. Sports update brought to you by Green Plan, providing you with award winning environmental planning and consulting services, whether it's municipal, industrial, or residential. Plan it right with Green Plan. Visit green plan.com or give them a call 780 455 4292. Let's go, Masters, cruising along. And uh, we'll keep you up to date on the Masters leaderboard as we work our way through the show. Anything happens over the Masters that we miss out on, uh, please let us know. Uh, fire us a text, 780-218-9999. If you need a Friday morning conching, you can do that as well. And, uh, yeah, let's see. Some people are saying, what about some Hungry Eyes? Cavus Reed pump-up song. I see people. T- oh, man, can you imagine 7 o'clock? Like in a 6 o'clock hour on a Friday? Hitting the Cavus Reed pump up song? I can. My God, we've got to get to the 200 likes. Let's go. Fire those over there. Closing in, less than 50 to go. If you're watching on YouTube, hammer the thumbs up. Like we said yesterday, it does, uh, it does push the video out to more people throughout the day. And we had, uh, we had one of our best shows in a couple of months yesterday. So uh, hammer that thumbs up for us along the way. It doesn't cost you anything. And um, go a long way. Sub to the channel, too, if you haven't already, which would be great. We'll come at you from the Popeyes Louisiana Kitchen Studios. Uh, you can obviously get your hands on the new Buffalo chicken wrap. I had real trouble getting into this today. I had it on inside out first. I felt like Marshall at home putting on a t-shirt. It was a, it was a mess. My head was stuck in it for a little bit. Real troubles here, real troubles today. So hopefully we can get things, uh, back on track. I'm sure tales of the North will get us there. That hey, usually, yeah, that usually gets the us North going. Star, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. That usually gets us going. Tales of the North Oilers and coyotes tonight. And guys, I'm getting emotional. Last tales of the North. With the Coyotes. I guess, Never. eh? Yeah. Now, with that being said, we won't miss them. 
But uh, well, until the last tw- one, twenty twenty seven or twenty eight, when they when they when they yeah. oh man, Coyotes two point So what's that make Jets one point Like what, gotta- somebody has to get Gary Bettman out of there before they expand back to Arizona. Like I sent him two guys on goal yesterday because uh, Cast was just like, yeah, you know, they just couldn't really ever get it right with the rink, and I was like, but they had thirty years. You had thirty years to put something where you thought it would be successful. Three decades, and it didn't get done. So, you know, just give them a little bit extra time, run it back, and everything's going to be fine. Not if your team, like, the Coyotes had a team for 30 years that they couldn't build. I think they're going to pull off some expansion team? No chance. What a mess. Did you see the text from Dolphin Nation? Nope. <clears throat> Holy hell, Eric, I just realized now it's called the Jordan Spieth remix. I feel dumb. It's not chopping speed. It's Jordan Spieth. He thought the guy said chopping speed. The whole time. <laughs> We're call- dude, what did you think? What did you- dude, you're killing me. <laughs> That's- I know that there's certain songs, and we say it in the achy breaky sometimes, you know, you misread a lyric, but all these years, you're not picking up the Jordan Speed? You thought this was saying the Jordan chopping speed? speed? What? Why? Give this to me one more time. Here you go. Chopping speed. Chopping speed. What? Say chopping speed. Why the hell would we call it the Jordan Speed remix when the lyric is chopping speed? <laughs> if it was chopping I, speed, we'd call it the chopping speed remix. I love those confessions. Oh, that's, dude, that's, that's great. Just, that makes me howl. That's uh, that's terrific. Like a well wild done, e coyote. Well done. Oh boy. Uh, all right. Seven eight zero two one eight ninety nine ninety nine. You got Tales of the North coming up. Man, ch- chopping speed. Chopping speed? <laughs> what the hell are you talking about? We... Where are you getting that? And then the, the Jordan Speed comes off the tee. Like, it's the tee box announcement. Yeah, right? We all... only play it on golf weekends. <laughs> Why would we only play <laughs> oh. a remix on golf major weekends if now it's called the it. Chopping Speed Remix? <laughs> God, I love you. That's hilarious. Uh, all right. Let's get to uh, Tales of the North. And, hey, if you want to uh, win some tickets to the first round of the playoffs here in Edmonton. Check out ChristopherBoyle.net slash Tales of the North. More information on how you can win those tickets. And uh, set up a chat with Chris about your future as Tales of the North, presented to you by Christopher Boyle, Lord of Corporate Well-Being, Keeper of Realms Health and Smiles. He's an experienced advisor with over 17 years of experience, working with both families and business. So if you have a business, you want a little bit of advice on how you can save some money here, put some money away there, He's your guy. Also, if you're watching on YouTube, like on your desktop or, or la- like wherever, you can scan that QR code and that will take you right to ChristopherBoyle.net slash Tales of the North. And to go to, look, you're going to come around to playoff time here and be like, man, I wish I had tickets, but they're too expensive. He's got tickets. He wants to give away these tickets to you. So QR code, scan it, or go to ChristopherBoyle.net slash Tales of the North. Tales of the North presented by Christopher Boyle. Hand of the Treasury. I mean, you get in touch with him, kind of speaking that Bronze Age lingo, too. <laughs> I shall be here to claim the tickets. And I guarantee you, knowing Chris, who's like... you love it. <laughs> they are here and ready. It'd be, it'd be a real good time. All right, Tales of the North. Here we go. You ready, buddy? All right, here we go. Tales of the North. Let's do it. Who owns the North? Yeah. Who owns the North? Utah, get me two. <laughs> Coyotes. Yes. <laughs> Tonight in the north, the wind does howl into the district of ice. But is it the call of the coyote or a faint whimper of ghosts of days gone by? A group of warriors having wandered aimlessly in the desert for near three decades. Unwanted, unwarranted, unaware of their future. While little Gary claims everything will be all right, these desperate dogs ask for, yea, yearn for, nay, beg for coin. And now their prayers have been answered by a Salt Lake, Salt Lake City savior. Tonight they arrive in our fair land, ready for one last beating. Before Batman finally concedes his eternal error and grants them freedom as the latter day direwolves. The eunuchs of Utah, for they now can miss the playoffs under a new name. These are the tales of the North, and may they be heard far and wide across this great land. 
There's only room for one Wyatt Ryan Smith in this league, punk. The Ryan Smith. The Ryan Smith uh, works so well. Uh, dude, great point break reference. Great point break reference. You have to. That was awesome. Tales of the North brought to you by Chris Boyle. Check it out. ChristopherBoyle.net slash Tales of the North for more information on those tickets. Utah, get me too. <laughs> Trev, have you seen Point Break? Uh, like kind of, sort of. Not the new one. We're talking no, Patrick no. Swayze. Yeah, Keanu Reeves. Yeah, like okay. I, I've I've seen like my my grandpa would always have it on back home. And, good, and good. I'd uh, good. that was one of the the shows I was uh, that and like Die Hard were always chugging along. But uh, like I'd I'd kind of sit down and watch it and play with my Legos that kind of thing. But I'd never really, you know, go pick up some Lego, go home, play with them. And uh, and watch Point Break. I think you. I think you would absolutely love it from start to finish. I, uh, all yeah. the movies you guys are suggesting, yeah. I think I'd like. So, well, I'll, we're, I'll we're add on, it to the list. We're on some crazy heater right now with movies, <laughs> because Wednesday we were doing hey, Wednesdays yeah. in Yink and Poop yeah. and. Uh, Throw Mama from the train. So, so what time night. and what channel is Point Break on tonight? Basically, is where that's we're, what it comes down like to. That's uh, it's, be, it's been determined already here. Um, yesterday, you had a couple of Uncle Buck takes, and Uncle Buck was on TV last night, and we haven't looked ahead, but there's a decent chance. That Point Break may actually be on TV tonight. It's one of those. I mean, uh, if that happens, I'm dead. Like that would be that would be nuts. That would be absolutely nuts. Twister was on last night, was it? <laughs> I'm actually excited for new Twister. Yeah, the, the new Twister, yeah, for I'm, sure. I'm yeah, excited yeah. for it. I like that guy, <laughs> Hangman from uh, Top Gun. I think he's a pretty cool, dude. So yeah, I mean, I'm looking forward to seeing it. I think that should be uh, that should be pretty good. Did I go too far by saying they're arriving in our fair city here for one last beating? Because the Coyotes have caused some issues, like over the years, where you're like, it's a the Coyotes are always in town at two o'clock oh, on a Sunday. I, I don't and forget it's like two one. Arizona I don't forget wins. the Toby Reader days. Yeah, you're right. Coyote days, right? Yeah. Remember he was, he was the killer, and then they acquired him to stop him killing, and then they didn't do anything. <laughs> they blame the water. <laughs> so yeah, no, this is well, yeah, yeah. Nah. I mean, at this stage of the game, again, they, they, it, it, we're looking at the tops of the Pacific, right? And and tonight's a night where you can kind of close that gap ahead of tomorrow's big matchup, but. It would, yeah, you want to beat take the care teams of this, in front right? of you and take care of business, but taking a quick look at that Coyotes roster and the the forward group and the defense, it's uh, even even without a McDavid, I think you should be able to get past them. <laughs> this is not the uh, this is not the reward for hitting 200 likes if we get there, which we probably will hammer the thumbs up here in the first hour of the show. Um, but you just mentioned Toby Reader, Coyote, <laughs> Oiler, yeah. Final time, Final time they're yeah, going to meet. Yeah. We never know a lot of chance. We had a song. We had a goal song for Toby Reader. <clears throat> yep. And it's available in the bonus content section if you're a Nasty Chat member. Pay to play. Here it is. He signed in the summer to a one-year deal. We got all excited because it seemed like a steal. His name is Toby. T-O-B-Y to Obi. He shoots a lot of pucks, but he can't seem to score. We hope for 12 goals and then maybe some more. His name is Toby. 12 goals. <laughs> T-O-B-Y, Toby. Ta-ta-ta-ta, Toby. Well, he's not the team's most physical guy But he really wants to score He's got that look in his eyes His name is Toby ta 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 toby Well, I'm not dumb, but I can't understand When Bobby Nix blamed the season on this one man His name is Toby ta 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 toby ta 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 toby Toby. Oh, Tobias Reader goal song. What a it time. was a thing. <laughs> it was a thing. T O B Y. T O B Y. Toby. Ta 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 Toby. Da 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 da. And the entire arena singing it. The best Swing. thing about that is that he played 67 games with the Edmonton Oilers and never scored a goal. 
And I obviously didn't write and create that until late in the season because he'd already been blamed by Bobby Nix. And I like how our expectations for him were 12 goals. It's like, give us 12 goals. We put 12 goals in the song. Couldn't even get, couldn't get one. Started his season or started his uh, career with the Coyotes. Four years with that, three and a half years with the Coyotes, then to the Kings, then his one year with the Oilers, and then a huge bounce back season with the Flames the following year, in which he had four goals, and then uh, <laughs> just didn't uh, just didn't work. I guess it would be a bounce back from none. <laughs> now, can I throw this out there for you right now, Tobias Reader, in uh, Sweden right now? Okay, hit me forty two games, yeah, nine goals, twenty six points. So, okay, it sounds like he's a second liner over in Sweden right now. He's found his spot. But, uh, you know, that's okay, too. That's fine, too. 780-218-9999. 780-218-9999 if you want to chime in. Your expectations for the Oilers and the Coyotes tonight. Hey, Dusty, little known fact that the hangman from Top Gun had a small part in The Dark Knight Rises. He was a stockbroker that Bane knocked out. That comes in from Nasty Kenny. Thanks, Nasty uh, Kenny. Uh, I mean, it doesn't really change things, but a cool little tidbit nonetheless. Was Dwight Yoakam also involved in the cast? <laughs> Man, so just quick side note here. Just just to, yeah, get that into we the... We just uh, dropped a new episode of the Aki Breaky Podcast yesterday. Dwight Yoakam's Fast As You. One of the sexiest country music videos of all time. Dwight Yoakam's lower body could move. We also... Determined on the Aki Breaky podcast, that's probably a song about bondage. Yeah, go listen to Those the lyrics. go listen to the song, listen to the podcast. You'd be like, oh yeah, you guys are right. That's exactly what it's about. But we were talking about how ugly Dwight Yoakam basically is, and I said, I know he's been in some movies. And then we looked it up, and he was the husband at the beginning of Wedding Crashers when Vince Vaughn and Wilson are negotiating like that divorce. The divorce settlement, that's the... Just plopped the, the right down The husband is yeah. Dwight Yoakam. I was like, what? That's crazy to me. Real plot. That's all things you learn on the Aki Breaky podcast, if you haven't checked it out yet. Um, yeah, we, we, we think you like homely it. mug, hey, on uh, when Dwight? Yeah, yeah, very, very <laughs> much so. Very much so. <laughs> but waist down. <laughs> Man, the guy <laughs> can move. He's like, I got to move my knees like Elvis because my face looks like it's been beaten with a shovel. That's probably what he was, uh, what he was looking at. Uh, all right, it's Friday. You've done it. Cavis Reed pump up song. Hey, I can remember back being an 11 year old kid, about 75 pounds, on a basketball court against a neighborhood bully, kicking his behind left, right, and center. And when it was all said and done, he was a little bit upset, so he punched me in the mouth. My uncles were over on the side observing. Talking amongst themselves, I don't think. When he punched me in the mouth, I decided I'm running to my own. You know what he did? He pushed me back to him. I went back, he punched me in my mouth again. I ran to my own, looking for protection. Need a big bro to protect me. He pushed me back again. And you know what I did? I faced him in the eye. And I said, my uncle's not going to help me. So I punched him in the face. And then I looked him in the eye and I said, then what? Now what? Now what? Now what are you going to do? Six fifty on a Friday. You did it. You unlocked a little cavus for you on a Friday uh, on a Friday morning. Nice work. Thank you very much for the two hundred thumbs up. Keep that train rolling as you work your way through the show today. And uh, yeah, more people will get to enjoy the program with the rest of you. This is good on a Friday. The likes, the little cavus to carry you it's, through yeah. your weekend. Well, yeah, you yeah. A little oomph. Ah, let's not mm. stop. Let's not stop. Who needs a conch here before seven o'clock? Yeah. Let us know why vaults wide open on a Friday. Like, let's just get into it. Flashback Fridays inside the vault. May as well. What do you want? Top 10 sounds from like the last decade? What do you need? All in celebration of the final Coyotes visit. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of the- <laughs> We have to remember this show. We're celebrating for the... <laughs> if you can't remember the last time of the Coyotes here... <laughs> I mean, what are you ever going to be able to remember? Put her in the phone, Brett. Holy smokes. Uh, all right, let's, uh, let's crack some packs. National Hockey Card Day tomorrow. If 
You see a card store on the side of the road. You think, gotta tweet it to the crowd. It's worth about 20, so hurry up and sell it to get more money. The crack pack is a little game where we can crack together. Crack pack, baby. A crack pack, baby. Crack Pack Indeed, brought to you by Wayne Sports Cards. Place is going to be pumping tomorrow. They got their balloon giveaway and everything. It's going to be, uh, it's going to be great. So what, Chase is going to be there. He's a Wayne Sports Card mascot. Chase is going to be in the house for all you kids. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be a busy day tomorrow, Wayne's, but find some time, get by there. It's National Hockey Card Day, a day to celebrate card collecting with your loved ones. And uh, here's what we've got today. So this is, uh, this is a box set. 2023-2024 NHL star rookies. There's a Bedard in here. And then it says uh, this is the complete 25-card base set plus one base set parallel. And it also says look for a rare autograph card. Okay. So should we get... We will look. Let's see what we got here, boys. Let's see. Let's see here. All right. Ooh. Is it like... Yeah, it is like... Oh, the man. What a, what a weird little buzzkill because uh, <laughs> like the top card is a Blackhawk. You're like, oh, it's Bedard no, who's no. in here. But it's actually Kevin Korchinski. Korchinski. Like, ah. that's, a, that's a hilarious twist. A hilarious twist. All right. Let's see. The, how do we get into these things? Here we go. All right. Let's see. So this is the whole base set. Who's in these star rookies? Uh, it's pretty nice to get the whole set in one little... Uh, one little pack there, but yeah, that that I hope they have Blackhawks first on every. Uh, what a little prank that is, hey? Yeah. <laughs> oh, the set starts with Korchinski. <laughs> well, this could be easier to get into. I'll tell you that. We need the. Uh, well, Where's my pen? Let Look, me, uh, oh my goodness! Let me pin this thing here at the top. All right, there we go. There we go. I open up. How Give many packs? Okay, yeah. here we go. Here we go. This is why we really need Crack Pack Cam, I guess. So you're here. We'll be like, uh, okay, Kevin Korchinski, mm -hmm. Evangelista. Yep. Noodles. Samuel Bull Duke. Adam Fantilli, Matthew Coronado, Fraser Minton, uh, Edvinson, Willie Cooley, Leo Carlson. This is nice. Zach Benson. Oh, my God. I didn't know that he was in here. What a surprise. Vincent DeHarnay. Oh, that looks nice. Vincent DeHarnay. Love it. Sliding into the star rookie Slab set. Slab it. Wow. I was stunned. I didn't know he was in this set. Uh, Matty Nyes, Forrester. Carte, Eskarov, Akito Hirose, Logan Cooley, Ridley Gregg, Connor Bedard. There he is. Look at that. Look at that. That's a nice Hell little, yeah. That's a beautiful card. Um, Mintukov, Brock Faber, having an excellent season. Levi, Owen Beck, Matty Portra, Marco Casper. Now, here's the card. This would be the difference. So we got the 25 base set, then we got the parallel. Let's be a Bedard here, eh? Oh, it's not bad. It's it's the blue Yaroslav Iskarov. I can see it the whole time in the back. <laughs> you knew who it was coming the well, whole time? Say, but, uh, oh, man. Just kind of well, killed yeah, I guess you could have seen it. killed the suspense for I me, was, but I... Uh, I was all excited. I'm like, ooh. ooh, here it is. Is it Bedard? Is yeah. it Bedard? No, it's not. It's, it's like uh, me watching the eclipse from behind. You, know? <laughs> <laughs> you can't see the moon at all. <laughs> yeah. It's um, already gone. I'll take that Fraser Minton, though, if you don't mind. I, Why are you taking the Fraser uh, Minton? Uh, Saskatoon Blade. Oh, okay. Well, I guess now the set's not complete. <laughs> well, I'll keep it back in now, there. Now, I, now in 15 years, I'm going to dig this set up in my Minton? basement. I'm going to be like, damn it. I'm missing a Fraser Minton. I've got Korchinski, but no Minton. Korchinski. <laughs> Korchinski. No, no, that's not. I, I just can, want to see it. Well, just, now I it's don't. out of order. <laughs> now i got to find it. What is it? Number 23. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, they're not in order. Connor Bedard is actually number one. Okay. Well, I guess I can go back in wherever. Keeping you on your toes. Huge shout out to Vinny Deharnay. Huge shout out to Vinny Deharnay. Is there a contract extension coming for Vincent Deharnay? Based off this. Well, I'll just oh. say I'll, I'll just leave it at this. Let's just leave it at this. More at noon today on the oil stream. That's all I'm going to say. We'll get into that. I think Tommy's got Tommy's got some info on 
on DeHarnay and possible contract extension. So we will uh, we'll get into that a little bit around noon today here as well. Uh, Curtis says Holloway's in 22-23. Vinny is in 23-24. Yes, he is. Uh, so that was uh, nice. But National Hockey Card Day, it's going to be a great time. You swing on by. You don't have to go in and spend like a thousand bucks. Go in, pick up a pack or two. Um, check out everything they got going on. Mascot's going to be there, I think, early in the day. Um, and they got, yeah, there's, I mean, it's not just cards. Tomorrow's National Hockey Card Day, but they got the Legos. They yeah. got the comics. Oh, yeah. They got it. It's a real fun place for both adults. Everybody's and happy. Everybody's having a good time. Like it's even yeah. like you, 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 sometimes you queue up for things or you're you're going to a concert or something. And you, 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 this is great. You're looking around while you wait. You, you can. It's just I don't know. They're they're good hosts. It's a good shop. Nobody's ever grumpy. No, at National Hockey Card Day or at Wayne's in general. Like, no, whoever like you go into Wayne's one day, you walk in. There's some guy and there's like, oh, it's too much fun. Don't even know why I'm here. Yeah. Well, what are you talking about? You're here obviously because you're a collector and you're in for the good times. I've got some uh, I've got some golf cards. I'm going to break on Sunday. Uh, a Sunday at the Masters break, which should be a lot of fun. Uh, Wayne's Twitter. You can follow Wayne's as well if you want any news at Wayne's Cards. But uh, 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. tomorrow uh, will be the uh, the gates. Give I'll yourself, be, a, li- give yourself hey, a little bit of extra I'll time. I'll see you at 11. No, <laughs> I'll, I'll see you at 10. I'll see you in the parking lot later. Yeah. Maybe get a stop by, get a panino afterwards, right? Like, Wheels is in and says, Upper Deck needs to make trading cards of the EST crew. Which rookie card will be worth more? Well, right now, I mean, if they drop cards of us, like YouTube Trev would have a young gun, but yeah, you, me, Maddie, and Tommy, we those aren't our rookie. Like they can't be rookie cards, even though we've been around. Like it's, they it can't. It'd be YouTube Trev, young gun, and uh, and uh, a Zacticum, a Zacticum scratch and sniff card or something like that. Uh, when Zacticum would be like, this is cool. I, I know somebody who'd want that man, card. So Zacticum yesterday, <laughs> and by the way, <laughs> Tuesday. Tuesday, Zacticum, if you're listening and watching, Tuesday is Zacticum's Practicum Review. Yeah, Live on the yeah, show. Yeah. He's going to join us sitting right here, and we're going to do a review of Zacticum's Practicum. You'll be a first at EST as we weren't allowed to do it this way at the old place. Due to, you know, no, you could do that. We're going to bring the Practicum student on, and we're going to... The good, the <laughs> bad of it all. Yep. And uh, he told me a hilarious joke yesterday, Zacticum did. <laughs> he sure did. <laughs> I always forget that Zacticum's 20. And, like, I'm 42, you're almost a man, Trev's in his <laughs> mid-20s, um, t- Maddie's early 30s, going on 55. <laughs> so, Zacticum's, like, a different generation around here. And uh, he told me, like, a uh, joke that Marshall or the Muzz would tell me yesterday. <laughs> and I was just like, oh, you are young, aren't you? Cause, so, <laughs> this kid kills me. So, he comes in yesterday, he goes, hey, Dusty, I bet you, I give you three guesses, you can't guess who had the most ice time last night on the Oilers. And I knew, like, their ice time on the blue line was kind of, like, spread out last game. So I, I said to him, I said, well, like, in my mind, I'm like, okay, what's the hilarious joke here? So then I go, Cody Cece? Like, did Cody Cece lead them in ice time last night? He goes, nope. And I said, well, Dylan Holloway had a good game. Is it Dylan Holloway? No. And he looks at me, just like my kids would. He goes, I said, I don't know, Trent. I, I said, I don't know, Zach. Who was it? <laughs> he goes, he goes, uh, Stuart Skinner. <laughs> and he starts laughing like crazy. <laughs> I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> he was belly laughing too. Oh, yeah. He's like, I got you. Ha! Oh, <laughs> sleeping on that one. Loser! I got yeah. you. I was just like, oh my God, Zacticum, you are hilarious. My God, too good, man. Conch for that guy. <laughs> but, Some, Chris Sadoway wants the disgraced commish mat. I want a collectible. Oh, yeah, that'd be that, good that, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah we'll, get, we'll get to a point someday. I guarantee you, at some point over the next like two, three years here on Edmonton Sports, we'll have our own sports cards. 100%. Um, anyway, yes, the Zacticum Practicum Review on Tuesday morning, right here live on the Nielsen yeah, Show. A total dressing down. Yeah. <laughs> Here's areas public, where you need yeah. to improve. <laughs> One, telling Stuart Skinner jokes. Uh, all right, Mike Johnson's on the way on the other side here. We got a uh, sports update coming your way for Century Casino. MJ's coming up. Future of Coyotes, future of hockey in Arizona. Obviously, the immediate future here for the uh, the Edmonton Oilers are they going to get the Los Angeles Kings in the first round? And you know, let's have this discussion today because the Golden Knights are still meh-ish. Are you worried about the Kings having a third crack at the oil here? I sometimes say, "Oh, you're not, it's tough to beat a team three times." I've been saying this. You have been saying this. And people call me. Uh, you know, it's, a, it's like Zach telling you the Joe, you, you stupid idiot. <laughs> I'm like, well, I, I, don't, I don't know, Zach. Who was it? Stuart Skinner. <laughs> it's like, oh, my God. Dumb idiot. 
I should have. You know what I should have said to him? I should have looked at him and said, "Get out! <laughs> get out! Practicum's over. Go back to school." All right, let's get to a sports update with LTE. Mike Johnson for Pro-Am Sports on the other side. Game day as the Oilers and Coyotes tangle from Rogers Place tonight. Tom Gasola have your oil stream pregame show alongside YouTube Trev beginning at 5.30 here on Edmonton Sports Talk, the TuneIn and iHeartRadio apps, and on YouTube. Oilers enter play four points back of the Canucks. We're first in the division with two games in hand. It'll be one of five games around the NHL tonight. Taking a look at last night, Kings over the Flames, 4-1. Islanders with a big overtime win, 3-2 over Montreal. Jets shut up the Stars, 3-0 on the road. Sidney Crosby picking up his 1,000th assist. Eric Carlson with the overtime winner. Penguins with a big win over the Red Wings, 6-5. And Austin Matthews scoring twice to reach goal 68 on the season. Leafs losing to the Devils, 6-5. Bryson DeChambeau, top of the leaderboard at 7-under. Scotty Scheffler. Hot on his heels at 6-under at the Masters. Corey Connors, the low Canadian, tied for ninth at 2-under. Tiger Woods, he's even through 15 this morning as second round action. Will be getting underway as well. Bit of a delay yesterday as a few golfers are finishing up the opening round. Blue Jays' homestand will continue tonight. They welcome in Colorado to start a three-game set. Jays will send Kevin Gosman to the bump. First pitch, 507 Mountain Time. Raptors back on the court tonight when they visit the Heat in one of 15 games around the NBA. Over to hockey again, where Canada's women's team over Sweden 5-1 at the Women's World's quarterfinals action. Canada will advance to take on Czechia in a semifinal game tomorrow. Game one of the AJHL finals tonight from White Court between the Wolverines and Calgary Canucks. Puck drop 7 o'clock from JDA Place. Sports update brought to you by the Sports Bar and Lounge at Centric Casino on Fort Road. Your home for the Oilers' push to the postseason. Catch all the action at the Centric Casino Sports Bar and Lounge. The Nielsen Show featuring Lieutenant Eric. Only on Edmonton Sports Talk. All right, 7.04 on the Nielsen Show. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. Oilers and Coyotes tonight. Uh, you can text us anytime in the Paris Jewelers inbox. Expectations for the game tonight. First of two uh, in the next couple of days. Vancouver Canucks, Connor McDavid still listed as day-to-day. Did not play last game against Vegas. Did not matter. They cruised to a victory. Looked very good in doing that. Yeah, As, as we said earlier today, if you're day-to-day, you don't play against the Arizona Coyotes. In the first half of a back to back, it's code just word, like yeah. that doesn't that just doesn't make sense. Uh, so we'll get into that. Obviously, uh, more of your thoughts on all of this as we work our way through the show this morning. Cool bet hotline of the day coming up here around seven twenty five ish today. And the key word for the EST flyway to Vegas with our great partners down at the airport fly YEG. We'll give you that Vegas keyword around seven forty five, and then after that we'll get to I says pardon, in which we will dive into Otani's interpreter losing. $180 million of his money. Uh, and obviously, Otani clearly not knowing that any of it was happening. Um, I like him going to Otani and being like, hey, man, I want 140 mil. Like, wow, that's great. Yeah, I also lost 180 mil. So, man, the guy was making like 27 bets a day or something like that. I make like four to five, and they're small. I can't imagine this guy. I don't know how I want to bet in cents. <laughs> yeah, Matt, he literally is like, I got 20 cents tonight. He's like, I had like, one last night, one, one, yeah. like two bucks. <laughs> Maddie's, been, Maddie's been nursing $10 up to 17 for three and a half years at Cool. I love it. It's a wild push. Uh, all right, Mike Johnson is brought to you by Pro Am Sports, your locally owned sports memorabilia apparel specialist. They got the car flags for you. Got to have a car flagger. Do you even care about this team? Mm. You can find them just north of the Yellowhead, St. Albert Trail, 128th Ave. Visit them online, proansports.ca. They got a couple of signings, uh, low and crucial Niski right now. You can get details on that at proansports.ca. Let's bring in MJ. MJ, you ever lost $180 million <laughs> betting on sports? Oh, I think you're yeah. muted, Mike. Mike, I think you're muted. Are you muted? Oh, well, there you go. There you go. Yeah. Unmute me. Yeah, there you're, you're, go. Good, you're good. You're good now. What's. What's wild is that, so like, I'm trying to put myself in, obviously there's a bit of a, a bit of a problem <laughs> with the gambling, right? But like, you're not necessarily even doing it for money because it's not really your money that you're going to try to, I guess, like, you know, you're losing whatever. Like, 
the, he was betting so much, so much every yeah, day. I, I mean, you got to scour the world to find yes. ways to lose $180 million <laughs> on bets. Like you're, you're hitting like high lie in Miami. You're picking whatever, you know, some cricket games, like yeah. what, like stuff all over the map that you could bet on. It's that, that story is wild, but it appears. And also like, like I get, actually I don't get being wealthy. Like these guys are wealthy. And, you know, sometimes there's complex financial arrangements where you don't deal with your own money and your paychecks just go to your investment advisor yeah. or something. But if you're paying off 180, like, <laughs> like even Shohei Itani should notice $320 million coming in and out of his accounts. Like, I mean, like at some point, does he get a text alert? Hey, another $14 million just got withdrawn. Like, when do you like, oh, at what threshold should we expect a human to notice Financial transactions what, on one their notification own you would think one notification. There's got to be right? one somewhere. One, one really. thing one. that uh, goes yeah. off. Yeah, one. yeah. I, I, if I purchase something in the United States for seven dollars when I'm down there, they're like, right. I'll get a call from the bank, be like, does somebody have her card? I'm like, calm down, it's me, man. Like, I use my pin code. We're good. Like, and the best part is, and I saw in the report yesterday, and we won't spend too much more time on this, but apparently the interpreter had changed the passwords. So that even like the financial advisors and accountants and stuff couldn't track it. I'm like, how would those guys not be like, hey, uh, Otani, we can't get into your accounts for some reason. Like none of this adds up, man. It's it's crazy. Or if you're still clued out of your money, like your 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 advisors would have uh, just are we authorizing the twenty two million dollar withdrawal? Like I, I, I just the whole like I don't know how much money is too much money before you worry about these things, but like it feels like he hasn't have that much money. Like I know he does now. Yeah. But prior to this, what do you you know, maybe he had a hundred million dollars in earnings, two hundred million dollars. Like you're losing somewhere close to your entire life earnings <laughs> while winning back at three quarters of it. I don't know. I know it's a different world we can't relate to, but it is wild, wild, wild stuff. This guy seems like such a bad gambler. It is amazing. <laughs> I know. The book is like, yes. Yes, I will take your bet. Yes, you'll be my only customer. I'm not worried about it. Yeah, somewhere, somewhere that bookie's sitting around there going, oh, I got 40 million here. This is uh, this is good news. Uh, all right, the Edmonton Oilers back in action tonight against the Coyotes. I mean, you probably don't disagree with our, if you're day-to-day, -day, you don't play against the Coyotes in the first half of a back-to-back. -back. What do you think? No, you don't. You don't. The only thing, and this would be so offsides, is if, like, you know what, the Coyotes are not quite as good get them 100 assists, and then park them for a little bit longer. You know, oh, you, you, you oh. can't do that. No, you, you can't, can't do that. Do that. <laughs> Especially, you know what, the fact of the matter, the Oilers are still battling for first overall, or first in the in the, in the Pacific, yeah. right? So, yeah, uh, yeah. if you're day-to-day, -day, if it's that tenuous, and you do have a back-to-back -back coming up, and you are playing the Canucks next, then no, you have to be prudent. You have to be responsible. As much as I hate the idea of doing that, especially when you're sitting on 99 assists, um, yeah, you, you got to sit them out. And quite frankly you probably should sit him out the rest of the year i mean you know if it's whatever is bothering him some sort of muscle pull or something you don't need like you want first be really nice matchup wise doesn't necessarily help you one way or the other it's going to be regard a good team regardless you need him healthy is what you need because it's also not just the first round like you know presumably you, you need him to play for two months without yeah. being compromised so um yeah it sucks and it like to get to 99 assists and then not play the last four games or something like that would be almost cruel, almost cruel to the point where I might have to play him in the last game, hope we're <laughs> winning three, one and put him out for an empty net. Like that's the only time you get on the ice or on the power play. But, um, but you have to do what's right, and I'm sure Connor would probably sign off on that as well. Monday against the Sharks, maybe a time. Yeah, you, you see, a, you get the Sharks on they, Monday. Uh, you know, <laughs> I mean, let them play four minutes, yeah, get an perhaps. assist, and then sit them down. Yeah, um, I yeah know you, that's probably all it would take. Yeah, yeah well, exactly. No, that's <laughs> one game. Uh, Mike, though, Wednesday night, Golden Knights rolling into town, and they have some injury issues as well with a handful of players. Uh, uh, obviously, the Oilers' McDavid list that evening. What stood out? What jumped off the page for you in terms of Edmonton's game? I know Dusty used the term low event. And I think the but Oilers dictated by them, di right? dictating like, yeah. that low event game and, and holding the Golden Knights to, what, under 20 shots. Now, again, a banged up Golden Knights team. But what jumped off the page for you from the Oilers' point of view without the best player in the world on the ice against, you know, a, a formidable foe in the Golden Knights, regardless of their health at the moment? Well, five goals without McDavid is, is five goals without McDavid. I don't care who you're doing it against. Those are guys scoring goals that don't involve Connor. And, and that makes everyone feel better about themselves. So I think... There is that, that while they are, of course, dependent and reliant on Connor McDavid for their success, the more guys feel like they can chip in a little bit, 
the better off everyone's going to be. But most importantly to me is that when Edmonton played Vegas, whether Edmonton won or lost over the last couple of years, generally speaking, Vegas felt comfortable controlling play at five on five. They may not win the game, but they felt like they could, tr- could control play. That hasn't been the case. That wasn't the case on Wednesday. And I think that's the great lesson. Yes, I understand boatload of injuries, good players. But at five on five, that game was played the way the Oilers wanted to in the Oilers' favor. And if that's going to be your first round matchup, and you can put Stone in there and, and Petrangelo, it'll be a big difference. And you can reunite that fourth line, it'll be a big difference. But the game played like that on the Oilers' terms, they're going to win far more often than not. That to me was a big takeaway. At five on five, they controlled play against a team that when the Vegas Golden Knights play well, they do that to a lot of teams. It is the Nielsen Show here on Edmonton Sports Talk, and uh, Mike Johnson is brought to you by Pro-Am Sports. Uh, They get the Coyotes tonight. Obviously, there's a lot of discussion points around the Coyotes right now. You spent, what, five seasons? Was it five seasons with the Coyotes, Mike? Six years. Six six years, yeah. So so you were there. Your thoughts on how it now, 15 years later, didn't work the fact that they might bring a different team back if they do end up moving this one to Utah. Like, is there a path to success, do you think, for some team in Arizona eventually, if done right? Yeah, it's amazing. Because even in my six years there, Dusty, I think I had three owners, two rinks, some sort of like <laughs> bankruptcy protections. Like, I, we, I, and I, <laughs> I saw this has been going on for 25 yeah. years. So, um, you can't say the league wasn't committed to the market. You can't say they didn't give them multiple opportunities to figure this out and make it work. And you can't really kind of cry, woe was us if they leave because you've had so many different chances and decades to figure it out and they haven't quite done it right. So um, I, I guess my first thought is it's surprising that it looks like it's finally over because they've been like year to year for like a decade. Yeah. Right? Like it's been, <laughs> Maybe this is the year we're going to fold. Maybe this is the year we're going to get moved to somewhere else, Kansas City or Houston or Quebec or whatever, or eventually now, I guess, Salt Lake City and Utah. But it's still surprising. And, you know, having talked to the people who work down there and people that worked when I was there, and even they were like, oh, no, we'll be here next year. Like, you know, like they, they fully thought they would be there one more year. And then, you know, who knows about the land auction and everything else. But the assumption was that because they haven't pulled the plug, they're not going to almost ever pull the plug on this market. So um, that that is always a bit surprising. I do think that the market, which I think is the fourth biggest metro population market in the United States, is certainly capable of supporting an NHL team. There are enough people and enough hockey fans to support a good NHL team. How many teams, Dusty, in the NHL, if they're terrible for a decade straight, keep selling out? Keep, keep drawing fans in. The Buffalo Sabres, who might be the best American passionate hockey market there is, were playing in front of half-empty houses yeah. you know, last several seasons. right? So it's just, oh, it's a market problem and people don't come. No, it's a team problem because they've been crappy for so long that they've eroded the fan base's enthusiasm for the game. But if they're not unique to that. You think the Anaheim Ducks, after 10 years of bad play, will be selling out? Of course not. There's like... The Rangers will do that. Maybe the Flyers, like the Flyers last year, couldn't draw anyone. So the no. point is, it's not the market, it's the team. So I, I think the reason why Gary Bettman has been so committed to Phoenix and why it looks like if the deal goes down as it's been described, where there is some sort of potential, if you get the rink, we'll give you an expansion team, is because if done right, if the rink's in the right spot, if the team's you know halfway competitive, there's more than enough people to make that a – viable profitable you know good market in the nhl so um i almost get like you take a step back so the nhl gets to move the team out of a trouble spot move the team for a few years to a better market more revenue hrr players happy all of that don't have to mess with alignment they're still in the time same time zone same region they can kind of just go as is plug and play and solve a really big problem and oh yeah pock up an, an extra 300 million for the other owners to chop up push prices of a struggling franchise to maybe 1.2, 1.3. And you could do all that right away in time for next year and then sit on the sidelines and see if this market and this ownership can pull off what they say they could pull off at no risk to you. Yeah. And if they pull it off. Oh, we lost him. 
Batman. And if they, you've done it again. Oh, there he is. He's back. He's back. No, we lost yeah. it for two no, no. seconds. Anyways, it always drops on me for a second. But anyways, but like, you know, if they can figure it out, you get to come back and get another billion dollar expansion fee and get a good market back in the NHL. It makes a lot of sense from the NHL's perspective. One more I want, and I've been asking this question the last couple of days of our guests. I'm trying to figure out what's going on because Matthews is likely going to hit 70. Kucherov's going to get 100 assists. Matthews make, make, coming from that uh, market as well that we were just yeah, discussing. Yeah, I was going to say, he's, he's burst Arizona, out of that. Yeah, now uh, he's going to have I to mean, be in Utah eventually. Right. Yeah, so you've got 100 assists coming for McDavid, 100 assists coming for Kucherov. McKinnon's having a monstrous offensive season. Matthews is going to hit 70. Like, these are levels that very few guys have gotten to. So where is this high-end offensive explosion coming from, Mike? Are these guys just generationally skilled talents? Are goaltenders weaker? Like, what? what's the, what's behind this? So, I mean, you start, yes, they're incredible players, generationally talented players. I mean, this is unique players doing unique things. But it's probably a little bit more than that. I think, you know, these are sort of, uh, you know, players that have grown up and fully Im- lived with stick technology, right? Like, they understand new stick technology, how to make it work. They also have grown up and sort of matured in the era where, Shooting coaches, skills coaches, skating coaches are all part of the best players' everyday existence. And, you know, I think that also allows them to take, you know, further steps. I think they're also benefiting from a lack of high-end, consistent goaltending around the league. Like, you think about the guys who've left in the last five, six years, right? When it's Carey Price and Henrik Lundqvist and Pekka Rene and Tuka Rask and Roberto Luongo and on and on. These guys who are Hall of Fame goalies, and they've been replaced by good goalies, NHL goalies, but guys that probably aren't quite as good as them. The salary cap has forced the league to get younger and younger. And the one thing younger players can do is skate better. The one thing they can't do is think better. Like, I think a 30-year-old probably can get in the way better than a 19-year-old, even if they can't go the other way as well as the 19-year-old. So you put all that into a bundle of, like, Offensive games have grown. Offensive philosophy, strategy has grown and sort of caught up to the coaching that was going on strictly in net and sort of even that playing field so that the best players have a better chance. And, oh, yeah, like they're all four Hall of Fame first ballot guys doing it. And they're all having great seasons. I just wonder for the guy, people out in Edmonton and people in Tampa, the fact that only three people have done 100 assists. I know. And it's not been done in forever. But now if two guys do it in the same year, like, does it somehow diminish the fact that the other guy did it? Like, we're like, oh, that's amazing. It's only three. Well, now it's actually five. Yeah. Like, it doesn't seem quite as impressive. It's, it, I guess it's a function of math, but it feels, even though it's mind-boggling, it doesn't feel quite as crazy impressive if two people pull it off in the same season. It's a great point, and I would 100% agree with you. It's really weird when you're like, he's done it. He's joined these guys. Oh, also Kucherov has as well. What? That doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Joined. Uh, MJ, we appreciate the time, man. Thanks a lot. All right, boys. Have a great weekend and watch those twelve thousand bets you play. Yeah, this yeah. Don't worry. Keep we it under control. Mike, the mystic. <laughs> See you later, Mike. Yeah. This, uh, somebody texted in, man. Like uh, his this guy's smallest bet was ten dollars. His largest bet was one hundred and sixty thousand dollars. That's quite a like. Who has that range? Somebody's yeah. like, uh, you know, I don't love this game. I'm going to put ten thousand on or ten ten dollars on it. But I love that one. I'm going to throw one hundred and sixty thousand dollars on it. Like yeah. this guy. So like, I bet in units like a lot of people bet in units my units are usually like ten dollars ten dollar unit maybe sometimes if my account's a little flush i'll do twenty dollar units so more on the lower end it would be like it would be like a twenty dollar bet a ten dollar bet like what what, this guy's not operating in units what's his unit eighty thousand dollars that's what he does like it's wild big unit um, KR texts in at 780-218-9999 says NHL expansion feels like a Ponzi scheme. <laughs> Eventually expansion will be done and the final over final owner flips the bill. That one's in from, uh, from KR today. You know, it's interesting on the offense and I'd love to hear your thoughts. Are you we talking a- NHL or MLS here? Mm-hmm. MLS Matt, offense? Or Matty will get no. that joke expansion. MLS is definitely a Ponzi scheme. <laughs> I don't know about the NHL. Um, offense, they, these elite like I know I haven't looked at like goals per game across the league this year compared to other 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 years but we haven't seen somebody hit 70 in a long 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 time we haven't seen anybody get 50 goals in regulation since Solani in 92 93 Matthews did that last night as MJ said the assists three people in the history of hockey 
have done it. Gretzky did it over 10 times. Mario did it once. Bobby Orr did it once. While McDavid looks like, assuming he plays one more game, is going to join that group. Kucherov is trending towards joining that group. So, And McKinnon might probably win the Hart Trophy, and he's got 50 goals, and, and he's going to be at 140-some points when it's all said and done. So where is this offense? Where is this elite end offense coming from? And is it just... These but, guys are being coached up along the way, so they're just amazing. Yeah. I thought Gager made it. Gager made a really interesting point yesterday on two guys and a goalie. Good episode if you haven't checked it out. He basically laid out that they're shooting against cookie cutter goaltenders. Well, that's what my point was going to be. We've discussed goaltending around the league. Um, or even when it comes to this team earlier on in the season, what other options are there? When we usually count the goaltenders around the league, we use one hand. Yeah, like he—that—that's that, kind of the example there. Of he pointed out most goaltenders, like ninety-five percent of goaltenders in the National Hockey League now, all play the same style. Yeah. So it's not like you have to go from goalie to goalie and be like, well, what's the book on this guy? What's the book on this guy? Instead, you go and you play you play this guy, and you know he's reverse VH, and you got room upstairs, you can bounce it off his head and in, and then you go to the next guy, you're like, oh, yeah, he plays goaltending the exact same way. So you don't have to have these books. So it's it's like every single night you're shooting on the same guy, whereas back in the day, you know, Patty Waugh was a hybrid. Marty Berdur played the game a little bit different. Dominic Hasek was completely different. Like, Ed, yeah. like they all... They all played the game in a little bit of a different way. And now it's all just like goalie, robot, goalie, robot, goalie, robot. And these players who've now been coached up with skills coaches and skating coaches and all that, it, it's almost like nothing for these guys to, to pick these guys apart. Well, and the quality of the two, I think, of your top, top end goal. I mean, even putting together a, a, an Olympic roster or whatever it is. I mean, you look at, like, I mean, nothing against Stuart Skinner, but usually you would, you would have your Broder, like your... Yeah. Who, do you, who do you pick? You can only take you know, two or three. Now it's kind of, it, it's not like that anymore with the, that top, top end. Um, but, I mean, I, I think all those things can kind of be correct all at the same time as well and kind of combine to what we're seeing here. What say you? 780-218-9999. Raider Jesse's in with a theory. Give us your theories. Oh, by the way, I'm going to do this today for you. If we hit 300 likes by 730 and we're close, Chris Russell goal song just after 730 today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you didn't one. see that one coming. Wow. Somebody asked for it in the nasty chat. I was like, yeah, we can make that work. So hammer the uh, thumbs up. If you're watching right now and you're missing the 6 o'clock hour, when you guys, all you have to do is hit that thumbs up, and as those grow, the show grows. Um, it's that simple. Help us grow by hitting the free thumbs up. That's it. That's all you have to do. So hammer the thumbs up. Chris Russell goal song just after 730. If we get to 300 before 730 today. Um, Raider Jesse says, we also have the most teams ever diluting the talent a bit, which certainly helps. 100% too. Your elite guys are still going to be your elite guys, but now they're playing against, and they will try to see it second line guys match up against first line guys, but they'll be going up against defensemen that wouldn't be in the league if the league wasn't diluted as much as it is. That's why I'm not sure the NHL can handle expansion, man. I'm not sure you've got two groups of guys in the American Hockey League that can come well, up here and play legitimate, like more expansion. They've just expanded. But you, you want 100 assist seasons? You're gonna get well, like that's what do you want? I mean, yeah. Is it crazy to say that if the NHL expands two or four more teams during Connor McDavid's career, he hits 165, 170 points in a year? Like I don't know. Maybe, maybe if they just continue to dilute the talent base. Uh, so, where does the offense? come from uh this text is in for the first time ever they've texted in and says guys it's the small pads goalies have been kneecapped and it's good for the game yeah at no point here am i saying that the offense it's great i mean i love watching it these guys are putting up insane numbers so i'm not complaining about it. i'm just curious about it yeah like where has it uh but i think a lot of things can be from? i mean again you mentioned the development and and just you know the stud power offensively and and i think too the lack of True. I, somebody in the nasty chat said most of them, they're only about maybe five game breaker goalies. Everyone else is tandem reliant. Maybe a strong phrase, but I do get the point. No, that, it's uh, true. I mean, that I think that's a good down. point. Yeah. I also want to give a quick shout out to the guy who texted in, and it was his first text ever, and I can't find it right now. It was Just from a, like a 204 number. Or 204, I'll, I'll get it for you. Sorry. Anyway, he, uh, he said maybe the text alerts to Otani's phone were in English. <laughs> I saw that one. And that's and I that's saw, why he didn't know what was going on the hell in is his this? account. The interpreter set it up so that the notifications came in English. And Otani was like, oh, whatever. I can't read this anyway. I'll ask my interpreter what it says. And the interpreter goes, oh, everything's good. Looks good over here. 
What's this? Uh, what's this? Hundred sixty thousand going out tonight? Oh uh, no, that's coming in. Yeah, that says in. He can read the number. <laughs> yeah. What's that doing there? That? That? Oh, oh no, no. that's just a. <laughs> no, that's a bonus. Congratulations, you hit thirty bombs. A little bonus for you. Like that's uh, that's a really good text. Hey guys, everyone's talking about the quality of goalies, which I think they're amazing. But why isn't anyone talking about how defensemen play now? Every defenseman is worried about being an offensive defenseman. You don't see anyone being touted as the great stay-at-home defenseman on the team. That's from Twitter Mary. Twitter Mary, it's a good point as well. The sexy thing now is to be Quinn Hughes. It's to be Kale McCarr. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's to be Evan Bouchard. Nobody's growing up saying, I want to be Vinny DeHernay. Even though he's in the star rookie set. So, (laughs) yeah, I think it's kind of being pushed that way for sure. And I, I said, you know, kids grow up. Nobody wants to play NHL 24 and be the goalie. You want to be, you're like Marshall Bo Keith Nielsen, NHL 24, <laughs> Michigan's behind the net. Yeah. That's what, and he doesn't even call them Michigans anymore. He calls them Michies. Daddy, Michie. I'm oh, going to shut boy. up. You're nine. Come on, man. He's watching this morning. You know, daddy loves you. But you got to stop calling it a Michie. Um, now, now him, and the, him and the Muzz are both watching. I'm going to send a message to my kids right now. When you're on the same team in NHL 24, you can't argue. I sat there and watched him play a game yesterday. Marshall was losing it on his little sister. Now, she was offside all the time. She's just coasting around. He's like, Elizabeth, stay onside. Does she like, think she has Pavel Brindle? I'm like, she's seven. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if you didn't have the mitt, I might have given it to you right hey. now. Who does the Muzz think yeah. she is? Pavel Brendel? I'm calling her the golden bear from now Co- on. <laughs> Coasting up near that the blue was, line. Man. Pass it to me, Marshall. Pass it to me. Just stood there. Yeah, so they lose 2-1 yesterday to a game. And Marsh has a little bit of a meltdown. And he goes, we could have won, but I promised Elizabeth that I wouldn't do the Michigan. And, and I didn't. And that's why we didn't score. I was like, everything's going to be okay, guys. <laughs> everything's going to be okay. But comes back around to the games. It's not cool to be a goalie in NHL 24. So young kids, they want to be out there. They want to be Connor Bedard. They want to be Connor McDavid. And if they have the abilities on the ice, that's the type of stuff that they want to do. Yeah. Nobody wants to be a goalie. Nobody cares about goalie masks anymore, hey? Man, it used to be such a thing. I know. Like, I mean, no, that, that, well, that, no, but that, that, that's maybe one of those things that kind of get you into, wow. As crazy as it is, the goalie masks started becoming cool in the early to mid-90s and developed a pretty decent yeah. generation of like, goalies. Because like it was cool to have, like, a colored yeah. mask. The artists kick ass now, but it's almost too busy. And too, like, you had your, you had your, much like, you, as you said, to the style of goaltending play, each guy had their style, each guy had a, a significant mask or, or design. It kind of stood out. It, it, that kind of goes to the point of the tandemness. They all just kind of meld into one. Uh, Justin of Albagoni says, too bad Pete Rose didn't have an interpreter. <laughs> <laughs> it was, yeah. could be a defense. <laughs> a good one it could be a defensivist. Like, what you know, happened, I, Pete Rose? I don't know. I My interpreter over here. The uh, Maybe the <laughs> text notifications were English is a real good Otani text. You got to track that one I'll down. That, that one could here. be in the mixer yeah. text of the day. Save the, uh, save the number. Uh, all right, let's get to your Cool Bet hotline of the day. Got to go to this Oilers-Coyotes game tonight. Look. We were riding Connor McDavid for the over one and a half points. He was not there for us to ride a couple of days ago. So instead, we hopped on the old Leon Drysettle horse. And what happened? Leon Drysettle hit the over one and a half. Are we crazy to go back to Leon Drysettle over one and a half points tonight? Coyotes? I don't think we are. It's the Coyotes, yeah. and it's plus 117. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're more than doubling your money here on Leon Drysettle to have over one and a half points tonight. I'm probably going to sprinkle. Bouchard over one and a half points tonight at plus 210. But let's go Leon Dreisettle over one and a half points plus 117 until they modify that number. You got to ride with it. Plus 117 over at CoolBet. If you're not lying, sign up for an account yet at CoolBet.com. Just use the, uh, use the code LOCKSHOP, all one word when you do, and you'll get a uh, 100% deposit bonus on your initial deposit up to uh, $160,000. Up to 200 bucks. I heard all that in French, and I just heard the number. (laughs) Give it to me. Stay cool. (laughs) Bet responsibly with our crew over at uh, at Cool Bet. Amish Man 19. Soon he's going to be calling it Chell. He he doesn't even know that yet. Oh, geez. Oops. He still calls it NHL 24. I do not need him being like, Daddy, can I go put some Chell in the basement? No. You can go play video games, Yes. and you can play National Hockey League 24. See, right. That's it. (laughs) The Mishy. Oh, I tell you. Uh, I blame your generation, YouTube, Trev. That's what I do. <laughs> you Uncle Buckless. I, I blame my generation for do a you, lot of things, Do too. you call it the Mishy? No, no, that's a new one, but I do call it You Chell. know where he got it from? He was playing it with his uh, 
his 13 and 11 year old cousins. There we go. And they were calling to Mishy. That's so, the goes, age so I can't range, even blame hey? him. Yeah. I can't even blame him. It's his ridiculous cousins. Bad influence. Who put this on? Like, hey, Godfather, if you're watching this morning, <laughs> this is on your boys. Uh, all right, let's get to a let's get to a sports update with Lieutenant Eric. Uh, I says pardon coming up on this Otani interpreter. We'll dive into more of the details. We'll check in on the Masters leaderboard here as well. And uh, hey, Chris Russell goal song. It's out there. It's hanging out there right now. Needed 300 likes. Got it. All right. Chris Russell goal song. Oh, boy. If I can find it. Uh, it's somewhere. I, I'm kidding. I got it. We'll come back with it. All right. We'll come back with it. Everybody calm down. Sports update. The LTE right now. Austin Matthews scoring twice to reach 68 goals in the campaign last night as the Leafs drop onto the Devils 6-5. Sidney Crosby picking up his 1,000th career assist. Assisting Eric Carlson in overtime, lifting the pens over the Red Wings 6-5. Jets shutting off the Stars on the road 3-zip. Islanders winning in overtime 3-2 over Montreal. And L.A. skating to a 4-1 victory over the Flames. Oilers and Coyotes tonight from Rogers Place. Tom Gazzola will have your oil stream pregame show alongside YouTube Treb. Coverage starts at 5.30 here on Edmonton Sports Talk. You can listen to it on the TuneIn and iHeartRadio apps and watch as well on YouTube. Edmonton enter play tonight. Four back of the Canucks for first in the division with two games in hand. It'll be one of five games around the NHL tonight. Over to the Masters where Corey Connors, the low Canadian yesterday, tied for ninth at two under as a few players are still finishing up opening round action as round two is underway. Toronto Blue Jays. Their homestand continues tonight. They welcome in the Rockies to begin a three-game set. Kevin Gosman will be sent to the mound. First pitch, 5.07 Mountain Time. Raptors visit Miami tonight in one of 15 games around the NBA. Back over to Hockey Canada, 5-1 victors over Sweden at the Women's World Hockey Championships quarterfinals action. Canada will take on Czechia tomorrow in a semifinal. Game one of the AJHL finals tonight down in white court between the Wolverines and Calgary Canucks. Puck drops 7 o'clock. Game two will go tomorrow night before the series shifts to Calgary for games three and four Tuesday and Wednesday. Sports update brought to you by the great staff at Park Mazda and dealer principal Mitch Lewicki, where it's pimento cheese all day long down at the dealership. If you're like me, you like to picture yourself in luxury, even though there's absolutely no way you could afford it. And if you can, well, even better. Thankfully, I picture myself in something that is luxury, but still absolutely affordable, like the all-new Mazda CX-90 from Park Mazda. With the new luxury features like facial recognition settings and quilted detail Napa leather seating, I can pretend to be comfortable with all of my proper settings activated without even touching a button, thanks to Mitch Lewicki and the great staff of Park Mazda. I like to picture Mitch Lewicki as a figure skater. He wears, like, a white outfit, and he does interpretive ice dances to my life's journey. Park Mazda, your dealer for life in Sherwood Park off Wire Road, Park Mazda. Russell lets it go, he scores! That will change the mood as Chris Russell makes it a 4-3 game. Well, he's taking all the blame cause he stayed out west Where all the bloggers come equipped with stats, no eye test Getting ripped online but he don't even blink Take a Weber slap shot and he don't even limp He's just a Chris Russell going down to block Just another shot, he'll take it in the crotch But a guy with a blog who hates his course he the most Hope he fails every time so online he can boast Give a toast to the man who wears number four Except for one time in his own net he scored You know he didn't wanna score that goal Then E-Town Twitter went right after his soul Controlled zone exits headline the best reasons That the Poho signed him up for four whole seasons Chris Russell, he's the whipping boy But he stayed out west, sucker Because that D-man is a cowboy, baby Get your laptop out, it's time to stop whining Cowboy, baby Chris Russell goal song here on the Nielsen Show on a Friday. And you know what? This is really benefiting. So this, this... Recent like push on YouTube is going very well, um, but it's also very much benefiting anybody listening on TuneIn or on iHeart or at EdmontonSportsTalk.com. 
because you're getting the goods. Like the people over on YouTube are like earning them by giving the likes. <laughs> They're down in the mine. Yeah. <laughs> and you're just up top <laughs> collecting all the money. That's it. That's that's the people right now listening on on tune in or on iHeart. Send us up another song. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Up the shoot. <laughs> That's it. I love it. I, I love those people That's just sit there point. on iHeart driving into work today, just listening to Crystal Clear, and they're sitting there up. going, ah, I hope the boys get to 400 because I'd like another treat. <laughs> you know, like, another treat. It's totally, un- it's, it's nuts. I love that Chris Russell, uh, one of my all time favorites. You in like the that one? Song department. Yeah. yeah it's, love uh, the original, love the cover. It's a good, it's a, it's a good one. I like that one. Uh, all right, you can uh, hit us up, 780 218 9999. 780 218 9999. I'll straight up throw it out there right now because what we hit yesterday, 600 yesterday, 691. 691 when the show was all said and done. But before the end of the show yesterday, I think we hit 600. If we hit 600 again, Dallas Aikens Eyes Remix to wrap up a Friday show. How's that go? How's that go? These for eyes? Woo! More than halfway there, on pace for it. It's not even like a big push. If you're watching on YouTube, hammer the thumbs up. And right now, there's people on iHeart and TuneIn being like, come on. Come on, do it. Do it. Strummy wants to be called Tier 1 Nasties in the nasty chat. Big Maple Sports no, Car no. says, we are the plebs, but we are mighty. Yeah, yeah that's fine. <laughs> yeah, you got to yeah, have yeah, a yeah. little pride down there in the, uh, in the muck. Yeah, you're like those guys in Warcraft who would go build stuff and then go, job's done. <laughs> and, then, done. and then the guy who's got the griffin comes flying in. You know, that's, that's what it's like. But there's no tiers here. It's all one big family. Yeah. Some of you just work harder than others, unless like at any a, other job yeah. in the history of jobs. Unless you're on a yearly membership or a monthly one, or yeah, which I mean, you don't have one. Unless I mean, you are a nasty club <laughs> member. <laughs> then you're up there. There's a bit of a then theory. you're up there. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Done. Uh, 780-218-9999. 780-218-9999. Uh, X-Ray J crushing the... I miss... Uh, was that yesterday? Crushing the 6 o'clock or longer? Yeah, he's he's living. Oh, he's having a good his, time. Our mornings are his evenings, in in a he's sense. He's having a real yeah. nice time. That's uh, that's good. So yeah, here's what we're here's what we're talking about. Oh, this is good. DB, I yeah. love it. It's true, guys. My job doesn't allow me to watch YouTube, but I listen on iHeart as often as I can. But then I just quickly open up the YouTube app and give the boys a quick thumbs up. Yeah, see, it's just in and, and out. Yeah, in yeah, and yeah. out. This will pop in. We'll take that. Yeah. That's pretty good. I says pardon coming up. Vegas keyword on the way. As well. Guys, this this is from Fat Efron. This Chris Russell Gold song reminds me of a young Fat Efron in grade seven who just made an MSN account and wears takeaways and posting to Kid Rock thinking I'm a badass. <laughs> Did everybody else go through that Kid Rock phase? I... I Devil Without a Cause was a hot album when that dropped. You, you can have your grits for breakfast or whatever that opening album was from him. Not too hot and horny on that. I know it didn't get critical acclaim, but that Devil Without a Cause with, with Joe C and the whole bit and the oh, Twisted yeah, yeah. Brown Trucker Band. and That was all killer album. The, the Eminem was on the album, for crying out loud. I, uh, I liked wearing track pants. It wasn't a Kid Rock thing. I still I just, love wearing I, track I, pants. I liked wearing track pants. I would like to get a good pair of Adidas three-stripe track pants. I'll... Hey, I mean, they're out there. I just have to go get them. But I just, it's not like they don't exist. I think you can still go get three-stripe Adidas. I don't know if you can get tearaways anymore because it's 2024. Who knows? You can get but, the, you can get they go, uh, they zip up halfway kind of. No. And then you get, yeah, okay, you cool. change what am I wearing? Shorts. What am you I wearing? Capris? I'm, no, you I'm wearing capris? Roll them up. You know what? Save those ones for Tommy Gazzola. Where's Where's Tommy the wrench when you need him here, hey? Tommy the Let's get him in here. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great, that's a pretty good handle, man. Tommy, the wrench can find you yeah, caseloads of Adidas track pants off the back of a truck, eh? That's, right. that's, 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 you want track pants, I'll get you. You Only need by the pallet, though. You need some Capris. Yeah. Tommy Gazzola sells them on the side. <laughs> Tommy Gazzola gives you a key word on Hello Hockey in the weekends to get a pair of Capris. They don't fit Belzy because he's got the record-setting yeah. legs. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, Tommy Gazzola dish those bad boys out. The stair farmer is in. Guys, sit McDavid until at least Saturday, and if he's not 100%, keep him out longer. They play zero. They play Arizona the second last game. He can get 100 apples then. Yeah, so they play Arizona. Yeah. They get Vancouver. Then they get San Jose. Then they get Arizona. Wednesday. And then they get Colorado. Thursday. Which is probably going to be a meaningless game when it's all said. But it's up. a back-to-back. And then but depending next week. On, but next week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Depending on when the playoffs start, too. Like, you've got a bit of a crunch there. But I would think it's... One more game, 
and then he plays against the Canucks. And if that's the case, you should probably feel pretty confident going into the playoffs that everything's going to be okay. Uh, but now there is the lingering, right? There is the lingering because playoffs are less than two weeks away. He's had to miss well, a little bit of time. Yeah. You, you never know. There will always be that seed and we know of it's doubt lower in your body. mind. But we, we, right? Like, yeah. we, we know, so it's kind of... Well, yeah, they said it's, it's lower body. Yeah, they it said, could be upper body. Well, what did Knobloch say yesterday? Uh, the old reverse psychology thing on the whole city here. Well, even Knobloch, where was the... I'm trying to find the quote, but he said something to the effect of, yeah, he's not in a wheelchair. He doesn't have a boot on or anything like that. Jo- Knobloch joked. Yeah. That we know. But if, if he's saying this stuff, to my mind... He's going to be okay. It's a joking fashion. He was joking about it right from the beginning. Remember when so he said to the media, yeah. oh, I'm surprised you guys noticed. And, like, and if that's even a front, like I I think if, yeah, it'd be fine. I mean, I would have a lot. I'd be pretty impressed with Knobloch if it's something actually kind of significant and he still has the attitude to joke about it. We'd have to put him in our poker tournament. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> He'd have to show up at the Cowboy. The whole timey anyway. Cowboy poker yeah. tournament. Um, yeah, that, that'd be something. But hey, everybody's banged up at this time of year, right? Can't we say that? Nobody's playing all healthy. Exactly. So. Herb's hose is in. Guys, there is no better feeling than ripping those tearaways off after your warm-up before a basketball game. Oh. Except you felt like a loser when the last two buttons didn't come undone. That was tough. I remember we got those in grade nine. First year we got the tearaways. We didn't have them in grade 10. We had like warm-up t-shirts. But it just it looked stupid. Uh, so then we got the tearaways for grade 9 and 10. And it was pretty awesome coming over after and, like, tearing them off. But you're right. The bottom two, if they don't come off, if you don't get a real good tear on them. Well, we always, we were, like an idiot. the bottom button or the bottom two were left undone. Smart. And if, and if you, Smart. And if you buttoned the entire pant up, you were seen as, like, a nerd or a, a lesser than. Yeah. You know, but the, but the style was to leave that bottom button. So it went over your uh, shoe, much like Dwight Yoakam in his jeans. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, over it's the very beach. similar. Yeah, yeah, flare yeah. out a little bit of the a bottom. A little flare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the style, anyway. Uh, yeah. North End, Saskatoon. But that's uh, man, that's I him. yeah. Bring him back. Bring it all back. Seven eight zero two and eight ninety nine ninety nine. Somebody's texted us in the uh, how they're lining up the playoff schedule right now, and I know they're saying the playoffs start on April twentieth, but I saw yesterday, and I'm looking at it now. It's not like everybody gets going on the twentieth and twenty first. Yeah. There's two games on the twentieth. Two games on the 21st, and then on Monday, your first four-game day. So half the playoff teams won't be starting until Monday, April 22nd. So we'll keep tabs on how those teams get slotted in there. But you're looking at two playoff games Saturday, two playoff Sunday, and then four games on the uh, the Monday. Uh, Sickler. Sickler texts in. He's, uh, he's glue guy's buddy. Guys, grade nine hoops. Milne couldn't get his tearaways off. Always left a few buttons. Classic glue guy. I, yeah, I expect better from Milne. I do. That's uh, that's a tough one. Thank you for the tidbit, though. Yeah, yeah, we'll, that's we'll good to know. That and, uh, that's good to know. Yeah. You give us all the dirt on glue guy there, eh, Sick? <laughs> yes. That would be... Uh, More glue dirt. That'd be nice. Guys, does Tommy ever wear socks suspenders? We never know. But I could see it with the right suit. Absolutely. 100%. And if you asked him that, he'd say, are you crazy? I only wear them with so-and-so suits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> what a dumb thing to ask. I, uh... Tommy could look at somebody in a suit and be like, he's wearing sock suspenders. He's just that good at it. Yeah. All right, let's get to your key word here. It's the EST flyway to Vegas. Then we're going to get to I says pardon. A little bit of a deeper dive and more mocking of Otani's interpreter. Uh, listen, four times per day right here. Hang out. Lock shop. It's going to be a good one today. We're going to do some live betting on the Masters today. <laughs> D-Gen Din. Uh, lock shop at 11 today. All in Japanese. And oil, yeah, oil stream, <laughs> oil stream at noon today. Uh, all will have chances to qualify. Hello Hockey tomorrow will have a chance to qualify for the EST Flyway as well. Two nonstop flights, three nights accommodations, tickets to a Cirque show presented by FlyYG and the LVCVA. Nonstop flights over 50 destinations. Your sports trip starts with a nonstop flight from FlyYG. Visit www.flyyg.com for more. Uh, WestJet adding some more directs to uh, Ottawa and Montreal. Nonstop flights out east as well if you want to uh, change your summer plans or add to your summer plans. Keyword today is text us in 780-218-9999, 780-218-9999. Your keyword is roller coaster. 
R O L L E R C O A S T E R. One word. Roller coaster. Compound. R O L L E R C O A S T E R. Roller coaster. Text roller coaster right now to 780 218 9999. Best of luck, everybody. Travel call. Uh, call somebody in about five minutes. That roller coaster in New York, New York. <laughs> I uh, I've, what I've been to Vegas now five times Pretty maybe high. five times, one time I did decide I was like we're doing it. I think it was Tam and I when we were we were dating. I was courting her still. And I Young was like, love, yeah. I'm going to impress you. I'm going to ride the roller coaster, New York, New York. What do you think about this? Uh, but it was closed. Yeah, walked right up there. I was like, here we go. And I was like, oh, sweet, no line. <laughs> Roller coaster scared of you. And then it got there. Yeah, yeah. Turned around to her and said, well, <laughs> dusty one, roller coaster, nothing. <laughs> so, roller coaster, 780-288-9999. And it's funny because when this word comes in, it makes the inbox look like a roller coaster. Good point. Because it's moving so quickly. Great sentence. 780-288-9999. Uh, this text came in earlier. I love that this is the first text. Like, of all the things that we've talked about, all the things that we've talked about in the history of Edmonton Sports Talk, which is still just, what, eight months. Anyway, this is the first time this guy texts in. Boys, I'm rocking Elks track pants under my, my, under my coveys. Hashtag Berta, signed bastard. Love it. That's a good handle, too. That's a good handle, too. You come in hot, first text ever, sign it as bastard. I like where you're going. Beating I like your breast about today. your elk's tearaways. Yeah, it, like that's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. I have some. Uh, I have some. They're not tearaways, but I have uh, two pairs of Golden Bears track pants that are bright well, green. Well, that's your Sunday best, though. That's yeah. your good. That's your. Uh, I'll have that party, on this yeah. Sunday. This yeah. Sunday for the Masters. Yeah, sure. <laughs> anyway, anytime I wear them, Tammy's like, "Change those pants." I'm like, "What are you talking about? They're very comfortable and they're light. Like you can wear them in the spring, summer, even." <laughs> and uh, she goes, "They look ridiculous." I said, come on, this is a mean thing to say. Imagine if I said that the other way. Tam, change those pants. No. They look ridiculous. Imagine think, how that would go over. Next time you have them on, you say... I get concussed. Uh, they're coming back. <laughs> yeah, I'm bringing, these, I'm bringing the green track pant back. They're coming back. All right, let's get into I Says Pardon here. I Says Pardon is for Lawyer Central. No topic is ever better fit. What's going on right now for uh, Lawyer Central? Get a clean slate for an affordable rate. Don't be paying for that stupid mistake you made in the past. Triple W lawyer central.com slash pardons or call one triple eight two eight eight eighty one seventy seven. They also do more than pardons. They're not just pardons. They help you with any legal issues that you have. And they've got lawyers across the country. One triple eight two eight eight eighty one seventy seven. The numbers here on Otani's. Like it just I just the more I see it, the more I'm like, Otani's either the stupidest person ever or he's in on it. Like it's, there's no in between here. Otani's either an idiot, or he's in on it, and they're covering it up for him because he's Shohei Otani. Each equally damning, really. Yeah. In the end, I like, mean, you I know are you get, either you are uh, going to get the legal issues of being an idiot, but yeah. you still might. But it's all very like Otani is sponsoring three princes overseas right now. Like he's either that dumb, or he's in on it. So the official complaint towards the agent, or not the agent, the uh, interpreter. Of Otani, Ipe. Ipe Mizuhara. The official charges against him are that he stole more than $16 million from Shohei Otani. When this first came out, wasn't it 4.5? It was like 4.5. Now <laughs> it's 16 mil. What's, what's, what's a couple mil here or there? The complaint, the official complaint alleges that Ipe placed 19,000 bets between, between December 21st and January 2024. So basically, like you see 21 to 24, you're like, oh, a long time. It's not. December 2021 to January 2024 is 26 months. It's like two years. It's basically two years. This guy placed 19,000 bets. He won $142,256,769.49.74. But he didn't. <laughs> because he lost... $182,935,206.68 with a net total loss of $40.6 million. And Otani knew that none of this was happening. None. Had no idea. And this was all with Otani's money. 
I saw somebody do the math on this. From December 1st, 2021 to January 31st, 2024, if that's what you want to run the numbers on. That's 791 days. That's 24 bets a day, on average at $12,800 per bet. Every day, that's over $300,000. And Otani had no clue that this was going on. Not a ding, not a notification, not a... No idea. As you say, people... It's so hard to get a, a human being on any sort of customer service line these days. You go to the States, you buy a pop, yeah. and the guy's phoning you right away. I, Which I appreciate, because, I, I mean, for some sure. reason, for some reason, like, call me once, but leave me alone once I'm down there. You <laughs> yeah, know, like, you, you've already signed off on it. So, and, and then on top of this, apparently, Ipe had changed, like, some passwords on accounts so that even the money, the money men, Otani's money men, couldn't see this. Like the the guys who handle Otani's money aren't sitting there going, "Hey, how come we don't have access to the account anymore?" They're not going to go to Otani. I still love the text that came in earlier today that said, "Well, maybe the notifications were just in English," and he went to the interpreter. Was like, "Hey, what do you think?" "Oh no, it's good. Don't worry about it." Like, how in the world could Otani know nothing about this while it was going on? If it was all his money, it just. I mean. I don't get it. I can't buy into it. I can't buy into it, man. Like he, there's no way he he knew nothing of this. Like there's no way Otani gets some sort of free pass from this, and it's trending in the direction he's a victim. This guy stole sixteen million dollars from him. He's wow. a victim. I'm going to read an excerpt from page twenty one of the USA versus uh, Mizuhara complaint. Okay. On or about February two, 2022, Mizuhara called Bank A using the. X0373 phone number associated with the Muzahara phone and attempted to access the other account to wire funds. During this call, Muzahara falsely identified himself as victim A and falsely stated that he was <laughs> attempting to wire funds to Bookmaker 2 for a car loan. This request was unsuccessful and Bank A froze online transactions for the account. On another call on the same day, a different Bank A employee spoke with Muzahara using that same phone number. I recognize Muzahara's voice based on a recording of an attempted interview with Muzahara on or about March 21 at LA International Airport, which I've reviewed. Moreover, the account owner of Victim A does not speak English fluently, while the caller spoke fluent English. I mean, this is this is him now trying to like. There's impersonations. There's there's some. There's another one I tweeted out here from that same uh, USA versus Muzahara on or about November 17, 2023. Bookmaker one messaged Muzahara stating, "Hey, Ippy, it's two o'clock on Friday. I don't know why you're not returning my calls. I'm here in Newport Beach and I see Victim A walking." His dog. I'm just going to go up and talk to him and ask how I can get in touch with you. Since you're not responding, oh. please call me back immediately. <laughs> uh, I want to read the whole thing. I, I want to take this weekend. I want to. I want to digest it. I want to get really into it. Um, I'm all here for it. This is this is great stuff. Uh, it's just gonna it's gonna open like an onion throughout the entire 160 some game MLB uh, schedule. There's gonna have to be a 30 and 30 or a, a doc oh, or something. Hundred and a hundred. And Otani has to be a part of it. Like they're gonna have to. He's gonna have to talk like the victim, or it's Ipe in this situation. And his face is blurred out. It's Ipe. It's, it's Ipe, not even blurred out. Ipe wearing a bad Shohei Otani mask. <laughs> it's like, and then like I the went into, then I went into the bank with this mask on, and people were like, "I thought you didn't speak English." I just, I I know like, the fact that some passwords and like access codes were changed, and even the money guys wouldn't have had access to some of this stuff. I feel like there would have been a red flag here somewhere along the way that would have been brought to Otani's attention over the last two and a half years. Fergie's Prostate chimes in, 780-218-9999. Gentlemen, who else thinks Ipe has a gambling addiction? <laughs> well, we might be... Uh, just a little one. Uh, you know, Just one of those little gambling small, addictions. small, but... Uh, yeah. So this could be 30 years in jail, which is why well, Ipe's taking the fall. <laughs> like, I just, <sighs> again, Pete Rose... You know where it said that, uh, and I thought Mike Johnson made a good point. Like, what are you betting on every single day? Three hundred thousand well, dollars every single day. And what were the what was the amount? Nineteen nineteen thousand bets. Okay, so and that was two years. Yeah, two nineteen thousand two years. So I'm even going like you look at look at I mean look at the standard Big Four sports schedule and and the on games. Everything. He's then, betting then, on everything. I know, but then you're going to props and you're like this oh, yeah. this. Uh, <laughs> but even even yeah, all all that up. As Mystic Mike said too, like you got to be going into highlight or something, yeah. backgammon, 
Like going down to the local town square and being like, ah, ten dollars on this guy to. Well, punch I him wonder. In the face. I wonder if the ten because they said bets were placed from ten dollars up to one hundred sixty thousand dollars. I wonder if the ten dollar bets were the Otani ones. And he's like, hey, Shohei, do you want to bet on an NFL game this weekend? And o- Otani goes, no, 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 I don't do that. He goes, just ten bucks. Just bet ten That's, bucks on the game. Yeah. Stay cool. Bet responsibly. Ten bucks. And Otani's like, okay, give me ten bucks. And this guy goes, I'm also going to bet ten bucks. And then under breath goes, hundred sixty thousand. Yeah, the, and then they sit there and sweat yeah. the Chiefs game together in the afternoon. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, it's... but I, I don't, I don't know. I mean, maybe Otani. Otani is either the most oblivious, stupid person of all time, or there's something else going <laughs> which, on. Which here. Are there's no in between. Both it's one, it's one or the other. Like, all right. Uh, JT Shark says, guys, I wonder how many CFL games he bet on. Well, but guarantee this but guy had action on the CFL. That's where it goes. Even soccer. I mean, you look at the crookedness within that sport. It's not on the top. It's usually in the lower rungs where people aren't so much paying attention, so to speak. So I'll say this, Who's though, to say? If somebody drops 160000 on the Riders plus six and a half, that's <laughs> going to be a flag. It's, it's, a, mo- it's a mover. <laughs> that's going to be yeah. a flag somewhere. That's going to pop up. Uh, all right. So I'm already looking forward to the show. Like, whenever this show gets done. Whenever that 30 30, whatever it is, take your time. Very much looking forward yeah. to it. We got other shows we can watch. Sure. I just started that Fallout. We got other shows. We're trying to watch Justified, the reboot of Justified. Uh, so we're trying, we got shows to watch. Uncle Buck. But I'm ready for, uh, I'm ready for this one. Darth Two chimes in. Tell you what, boys, the Jays dodged an absolute bullet with this interpreter. Can you imagine the havoc he could have wrought betting the props market in Canada? <laughs> Oh, I said it from the wild. start too, and Atkins. This is an Atkins Shapiro masterclass, is it not? If this, if Otani would have signed, if Otani would have signed in Toronto, and this is the hundred and eighty million would have been two hundred million because Ipe would have been betting on the Raptors all season, and it would have completely, absolutely sewered him. So stay tuned. At least we got something. Remember, like my eyes says, part of Monday was like, how come we haven't heard anything in this case? Yeah. Now we've heard some stuff. I just want to read the entire. So we'll see where we're at there. That's delicious stuff. Penner's Pancake says uh, 404 and climbing. Yeah, so we are on a 600-like pace. And the show's just going to get better. Mm, that's good coming up. We're going to give Sid the kids some love. Orange and blue breakfast for the Oilers and Coyotes tonight. We're going to dive into that. We're going to give away a gift certificate to Sobey and Safer Liquor Beer of the Week. So keep hammering those thumbs up. Dallas Aiken's Eyes Remix is up for grabs today before 9 o'clock if we hit 600 thumbs up. So, as YouTube Trev stated earlier in the show, it's not a coincidence that the views for yesterday's show were way up. The likes are way up. Pushes it out to other people. So, we appreciate the support. You've paved the path to what's at the end, the reward at the end. Now, you have to just go do the work, and then at the end, you can say, job's done. This is it. The goal is there. Go get it. But And I, I think take pride in this a little bit. Yeah. Because... We, I ran the numbers earlier today. McAfee show, and McAfee, we're not comparing Edmonton Sports Talk to Pat McAfee. Dude's a, a legend and a giant. But there was like 72,000 views on McAfee's show yesterday. And he had like 1,300 likes. Now, I don't know if they interact with listeners like we do. So I'll give them a, you know, a free pass a bit. But like that, that like rate was like 1.7%. We were at 17% yesterday. And it's not really because of anything we're doing. It's because of you guys watching, hammering the thumbs up. So thank you very much for that. As Trev said, industry standards, like a 6% like. And we're like, trip. we almost tripled that yesterday. So hammer the, uh, hammer the thumbs up, and it would go a long way in uh, helping us build what we're building, which will only get better, and then make it better for you as well. Who's qualifying today for the EST Flyway to Vegas? Today, we have Aaron on the line. All right, let's go to Aaron. Aaron, congratulations, man. You are one step closer to winning a trip to Vegas. Thanks a lot. Have you been to uh, Vegas before, Aaron? Uh, maybe 12, 13 years. 12, 13. Okay, so it would have changed a little bit. Who would you bring with you? Uh, probably the other half. Yeah, the wife. Okay, all right. You know what? Be a hero. Win a trip to Vegas for you and your wife with Edmonton Sports Talk. All right, man? Sounds good. All right, Thanks. good luck. Tell your friends, all right? Okay, have a good day. There you go. That's Aaron. Who's calling me from Wainwright right now? Who's yeah. calling me from Wainwright? Answer on the phone. Let's see what's going I don't, on. I never pick up my phone. Answer I'm definitely phone. not going to pick up an 801 AM call from Wainwright. That doesn't make a lot of sense. Put him on the air. Maybe they're trying for that Vegas. It doesn't look like a fake number, though. No. Oh, I'm curious. 
Although anyway, maybe whatever. you got your voicemail set up. I'm no, sure. No, I don't have well, my voicemail that's set too up. Too bad. <laughs> Oh, well. I, I was like, nobody leaves me voicemails anymore. A text the set up phone. in two years. Text, like, yeah, fire me a text. Give them a text. If that's you from Wainwright, call me. Fire phone me a text. during the show. Poor form. It is, it's a bad look. It's a bad it's look. A bad. Uh, all right, Mr. Mike's. How about this yesterday? You see that? Pro Am? Pro Am? Yeah, they know the, what the they're The Pro Am crew Barry going, Hay. having a little meeting. Well, little Barry? At Mr. Mike's yesterday. Now, it's nice because just up the road. Yep. So it makes a lot of sense. But what were they having at the meeting? Six o'clock or lager. Nice old can there, yeah. And that it says great. on the Mr. Mike's menu, I'm looking at drink up. Oh, that's a good idea, So a nice too. little message as well next to the can there. So. All right. If you want to win a gift certificate right now, Mr. Mike's Steakhouse Casual. Casual is a place ever in the Hampton Inn on the corner of 137th Avenue Mark Messier Trail. They got that 6 o'clock or lager there for you. Delicious nectar of the gods. Uh, let's do it. If you want to play, 780-218-9999. 780-218-9999. Nine. Let YouTube Trev know that you would like to play Kind of Easy Trivia today. We'll go there. Three questions too many. Orange and blue breakfast. Mm, that's good. And so we the safe with liquor beer of the week. All coming up before 9 o'clock here. And possibly the Dallas Aikens Eyes remix as well. Let's get to a sports update with Lieutenant Eric for Claiborne Services. If you're looking for work, you found it. ClaiborneServices.com. Oilers and Yotes tonight from Rogers Place. Tom Gazzola and YouTube Trev will get you set. They'll have your oil stream pregame show coverage starting 5.30 here on Edmonton Sports Talk. Be tuned in iHeartRadio apps and as well on YouTube as the Oilers four points back of Vancouver for first in the division. Two games in hand. It'll be one of five games around the NHL later tonight. Action last night saw Austin Matthews score twice. He sits at 68 goals. Leafs would lose, though, to the Devils 6-5. Sidney Crosby is at 1,000th career assist. Assisting Eric Carlson in overtime to lift the Penguins over the Red Wings 6-5. Winnipeg shutting up the Stars 3-zip on the road. Islanders winning in overtime 3-2 over Montreal and the Kings. Skating to a 4-1 victory over the Calgary Flames. Over to the Masters. Second round action underway and a few players finishing up opening round from late yesterday. Corey Connors was the low Canadian at 2-under through the opening round. Bryson DeChambeau, 7-under. He's top of the leaderboard. And Scotty Scheffler right on his heels, sitting at 6-under from the opening round. Toronto Blue Jays' homestand continues tonight. They welcome in the Rockies to kick off a three-game set. Jays will send Kevin Gosman to the mound. First pitch, 5.07 Mountain Time. Raptors are in Miami tonight. One of 15 games around the NBA. Back over to hockey. Game one of the AJHL Finals tonight from White Court. It's the Wolverines hosting the Calgary Canucks. Puck drops 7 o'clock. Game two will go tomorrow night before the series shifts to Calgary. Games three and four scheduled for Tuesday and Wednesday. In Canada, over Sweden, 5-1 in quarterfinals action at the Women's World Hockey Championships. Canada will now face Czechia in semifinals tomorrow. Sports update brought to you by Claiborne Services. Take your career to the next level with Claiborne Services. They are hiring all positions, including journeyman bricklayers and apprentices of all levels. Take advantage of their outstanding mentorship program and work with peace of mind, knowing that they are an industry leader in safety for more visit www.claiburnservices.com or you can make it easy and give Jeff a call 780-910-6728 Yo, Y-E-G Let's kick it Ice Ice District Ice Ice District Alright, stop Collaborate and listen. Ice District, open here's what you're missing. Rogers Place, shining so brightly. Get your tickets, watch Mick David Knightley. Can he be stopped? Yo, I don't know. Give him the puck and he'll go. To the extreme, nothing but a sick handle. Around the D, man, make him look like Yandel. Damn, game over the night looms. No more one, 18th and poisonous mushrooms. Surprise, it's a new winter garden. I mean, Ford Hall, I beg your pardon. Love it or hate it, you better get going. Ice District's the bomb and it's just exploding. If there was a problem, yo, he solved it. You're on the hook while Kate's just profits. Ice, Ice District. Game district. day in the district as we district. continue to get you set. Oilers and Coyotes tonight. All of our songs brought to you by the team over at Sportball, www.sportball.ca. Sign your kids up for some summer programs today. Uh, my buddy who I was watching the uh, Masters with yesterday, we're sitting there talking about stuff, and I brought up uh, Sportball. I've been brought up. He goes, hey. He goes, I forgot to tell you. He goes, I was listening to your show one morning, and we've got our older girls in programs this summer. Uh and you mentioned sport ball. Hello? And I signed the young one up. She's two and a half years old. We joined the class that week. I was like, what? Yeah. Advertising works. 
Yeah, for a good cause. Not, it was great Exercise cause. and everything. It's, I, I feel like we've helped a young life. This isn't a gambling or an alcohol. I mean, you know, and, no, and those I mean, things, but this is this is good. Getting your kids active and all that. And I also did tell him that if she wants to sign up for a CoolBet account, <laughs> yeah. use the code LOCKSHOP, and you get a 100% deposit bonus on an initial deposit of 200 bucks. <laughs> stay cool. Said, stay you cool. Bet with sponsor, we. <laughs> stay cool. Bet with sponsor, we. <laughs> That's bad. That's bad. You didn't do that. No. No, I didn't but, do that. Uh, no, that yeah. was just a joke. It's, that was just a joke. Don't take things too seriously. Get on the record, yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, what is it? we're trying to push towards six hundo today. I do like you taking a side, but listen, yeah, yeah but listen. <laughs> you take this. Don't yeah, tell yeah. daddy. Listen to this. I got a I got a fifty dollar card here to sign up. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, four hundred and sixty likes. We are one hundred and forty away from getting that Aikens remix before nine o'clock and having YouTube Trev cry on camera. Basically, <laughs> that's my favorite uh, song. <laughs> you I, love that one, don't you? That's, uh, easily, yeah, easily. Yeah, yeah. Dallas oh, Aikens eyes I remix. Love it. You, like, you like that? Oh, he's excited. All right, who's going to play kind of easy trivia today, man? Today we have Curtis. All right, Curtis is going to play today, uh, trying to get his hands on that gift certificate to Mr. Mike's Steakhouse. Casual, casualest place ever. Six o'clock or lager is there and ready for you. Check it out. Hampton Inn on the corner of 137th Ave and Mark Messier Trail. The Moose. All right, let's go to uh, Curtis this morning. Needs to get three out of five correct to be a winner on a Friday morning, which we desperately would like to see. Curtis, you ready to go? Sure, am. All right, here we go. I'll start the ticker. I have to read the first question. Good luck, man. Who do the Edmonton Oilers play tonight? Arizona. Which city are the Coyotes possibly moving to? Salt Lake City. What is the name of the NBA team in Utah? Jazz. Who is taller, Carl Malone or John Stockton? Carl Malone. What sport does Bryson DeChambeau play? Golf. Boom. Five for and five. And Sergio Ramos gets a nipple erection. Oh, 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 is that dirty? This is not just a dream. It's a wet dream of orgasmic proportions. Oh, oh, oh is that dirty? Frustration sets in and the emotion goes out. And then you just start playing by yourself. Oh, oh, oh is that dirty? You cannot come to my house. No, 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 not today. You cannot come to my house. No, 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 not today. Nice job. Nice job by Curtis. Smooth. Executed it perfectly. Well done, sir. Well done. He's off to Mr. Mike's. Where the fro- I'm telling you, I, I almost want to be like my grandpa back in the day when he used to go into like Zeller's and just get fries and gravy. Just go to Mr. Mike's, get a six o'clock or lager, a plate of fries and gravy. I'm telling you, you'll love it. I a confession, the wife and I have been uh, doing that usually when we go out, we'll... Because, I mean, look, the, uh, the day-to-day living, the economy, right? I mean, the economy, uh, you gotta make, but I, I do like, uh, we'll, we'll share a plate, like an entree, like, you know, that type yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then if you, if you want, like, just get a little fry, a side fry, side with, fry with a gravy, gravy. And, and to share that with, with yeah, one other person, it, it's perfect, just perfect. Mr. Mike's fries are the best in the biz. I'll die on that hill. Yeah. Go have them, and then text me and be like, damn it, Dusty, you were right. They are delicious. With the malt vinegar on there. Eh? How about this? Steven Robertson over on the Nasty Chat today. My daughter is doing her second sport ball class tomorrow. The first one was great. It's great. It's a great experience. Gets kids into sports. I wish they had it when I was a kid. I had to get into kids' sports, and my parents yelling at me all the time. Dude, let's do that. Sport ball, it's like a stress-free suit. I mean, if, and I know there'll be, like, you'll be, there'll be parents out there who didn't play sports themselves growing up, who will be too intimidated to get their kids into sports. Not a lot of you, but there's some of you who probably feel this way. I'm telling you, sign your kid up for sport ball. It's, it's, a, it's a great time. It's a great time. All right, let's get into it because we got orange and blue breakfast coming up. Mm, that's good is on the way. So we can save for liquor beer of the week and the wrap for William Huff. Still to come here. Lock shop, 11 o'clock. Oil stream at noon and the hangout from 9 to 11. They will all have opportunities for you to get in on that EST flyaway to Vegas. Lieutenant Eric, do you have a liner for the segment today? I do. It's three questions too many. Brought to you by the great staff at Park Mazda. Where they have the best service in the city. You can bet on it. Park Mazda, your dealer for life. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, you get that. Bet? I get. Yeah, yeah, bet. It makes sense. Dealer. Oh. Oh, 
You're rolling. Life. Yeah. <laughs> rolling. Right, yeah, that's, a, that's a good one. Uh, do you have a Twitter account? At Lieutenant underscore Eric. You can follow uh, on Twitter. Some of the excerpts from uh, USA versus Muzahara are up. I've retweeted those. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> You put out the, uh, well, this is now kind of expired tweet, but the Tales of the North handles for the Coyotes organization, and you had the uh, sausage gift. Yeah. I mean, that worked out it's, really well. I right? know, and then, yeah. A yeah. uh, picture of the uh, Uncle Buck on TV as well last night, which was nice, and uh, Barry's tweet from Pro-Am Sports, the old 6 o'clocker logger, and the Mr. Mike's menu, all up there at Lieutenant underscore Eric. You can also follow me on Instagram, at Lasagna Enthusiast, and follow Edmonton Sports Talk both on Twitter, at YEG Sports Talk, and on Instagram, Edmonton Sports and Talk. And on TikTok. And on TikTok. We are on there as well. The YouTube, subscribe. You might as you might as well. It's free to follow all of these things. Follow them. You'll you'll never not know what's going on in the world of EST. It's important. Question number one. This is a good one. This ties into the Masters. And a great round yesterday for this guy. But uh, DeChambeau has to be the guy who annoys me the most in sports, guys. Who do you guys have? Who annoys you the most in sports? Holy right? hell. What a. I was talking okay. to somebody else yesterday about DeShambo, too. Oh, Trev, it was you. Yeah. Weren't you talking about DeShambo? Like, he's got a YouTube channel and you, you just don't, you don't like him. Yeah, I'm not a fan of Bryson DeShambo. No. Um, he's, and I actually, as soon as I went home yesterday, I watched a little thing on Brooks Kepka and him and the beef that they kind of yes, had yes. and all the fans kind of. By Acme. Giving, yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, nice. Look at that. Um, but uh, I got a few and uh, I don't. Well, the one is, I don't know, Rasmus Anderson for the Calgary Flames. <laughs> I, I cannot stand him. Um, but even uh, Marcus Smart, not a not a big Marcus Smart guy for the, for the Celtics. Really? What a don't weird, like what a weird like thing. Can't stand him. When they took out the Raptors, uh, he put out a tweet, and uh, he, it was it really ticked me off. He said, "We the North." Uh, when they, that year, and I was like, dude, like, I don't know. I'm not a fan of him. I'm not a Celtics fan, but uh, Marcus Smart, don't like you. He's not even on the Celtics anymore, I don't think. No, I think he's on the Grizz now. Anyway, it's okay to still dislike him. Uh, Rick, what about you? Who didn't always who? Like? Uh, Canadian Football League flair, uh, uh, Simone Lawrence. A, um, uh, that's a good one. I mean, name any sort of Winnipeg Blue Bomber over the past you know, five years. I, I could probably have on my list quite high. <laughs> I, I, I kind that's of just a, a rival thing, though, right? Yeah, like, it is. That's, that's going to be natural. Like, uh, like Trev, Sa- yeah, Rasmus Anderson. And that's, that's usually, I, I think, where most answers here would go. I mean, I'm expecting a lot of from an Oilers fan, fan points. It's not um, like a hate thing. It's like an annoyance. Well, like, annoyance, I, I guess, yeah. I mean, it's kind of the same thing. But Well, but annoying, like... Who's the most annoying... Yeah, uh, annoying t- directly to your team, or just you know annoying within the league and never really touch you. Like you know, that's two different things. Yeah, like uh, Tang goes in over in the nasty chat, says Matthews annoys me. Joel says Matthews. Dean says Mitch Marner. Seven eight zero two one eight ninety nine ninety nine. Jeff from GP is in. It says Mikey Anderson can't stand him. Uh, this one says guys definitely LBJ. Oh, I never heard of him. What are you talking? I don't know who <laughs> that is. Uh, Any OJ's in there? Too soon. Uh, probably too soon. Uh, I'll go Max Verstappen. Hey, Max that's good Verstappen for racing, annoys yeah. me. Like all he does is win, but he's still complaining. Like during the winning, he's like, "Oh, this car." I'm like, "You're up by 12 seconds. Calm down." And then he, he his car doesn't finish a race. It's the end of the world. Like he's gonna leave Red Bull because he doesn't get everything he wants. Shut up. We're really opening this thing now because Verstappen, uh, uh, however annoying he is, he is successful. Lance Stroll. I guess would be my pick to have one Canadian representing us as a nation. You know, the days of Villeneuve yeah, yeah. and everything, and we got this guy. Yeah, this that guy. Suck like too. that is that's annoying. Being a Canadian, kind of, re- or just a Canadian, but a racing fan, and that's the rep. Uh, JCD seven eight zero says Evan Bouchard. Yeah. Um, Chris Chris Run says the Paul brothers. Uh, I'm I'm surprised that one hadn't popped up earlier. Double A says Christian Horner. Um, Mucky is in today at 780-218-9999. Steven Stamkos, when he criticized Omar's 360 in the shootout, <laughs> I hate him. Uh, Jay in the Park says, Corey Perry, until now. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, Mark Stone's face. Jeez. Uh, Jets fan texts in and says, most, van- most annoying, Evander Kane. But he does put in brackets, Jets fan here. Well, you, you, and you can, I think you can admit that even as an Oilers fan. From from not to you, but to yeah, it's all great to have a pest in your house, right? This is a good one, guys. I hate Aaron Oberson, who I played beer league <laughs> hockey against in Whistler. He speared me once. 
<laughs> Who annoys Aaron you the most? Oberson. Aaron Oberson yeah. from Rec League. Didn't have that name on the card, but... Not very familiar. Not very familiar. Jasmine is in. She's an association lady. She says Steph Curry and Aisha Curry in the stands. Okay. It's like, yeah, there's a lot There's a lot of shots flying over there for sure. Lewis Hamilton from Tommy Rubella. I cannot stand Adrian oh. Kempe. That dude is an Euler killer. Johnny yeah. the Accountant. I almost respect Adrian Kempe for there's being an Euler killer. Annoyance turns to respect in a, in yeah. a sense, eh? yeah. I guess. Uh, let's see. Who else? Hey, we Toby got? Reader joins. <laughs> oh, no, we already played the Toby Reader song. We don't need to bring up Toby Reader again. Trev, who else you got? Yeah, one more. Uh, I forgot about this guy. UFC, Michael Chandler. Uh, I think uh, he's kind of, he, he's trying to be like, uh, or wait, no, sorry, not Michael Chandler. Strickland? Uh, yeah, yeah, Sean Strickland. Why, say, why, why, yeah, yeah. My mind was like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Strickland's definitely Yeah, annoying. Strickland. Yeah, definitely him. Uh, I, I can't stand him. He, he. He talks the talk, and he doesn't really back it up most of the time. Of Way too much. It's yeah, absolute a-hole, and I, I don't like him. Uh, How about this from RJ? Scott Boris. Scott Boris. <laughs> I like oh, that's a guy type for hitting yeah, like a yeah. power agent. That's, uh, let's open it up. That's good. Oh, John T. and Victoria, or is it John T. and Victoria? Because my mind <laughs> nice was thought you. the exact same yeah. thing. Aaron Rodgers. Ooh. Pretty annoying. So, like, Bryson DeChambeau can be annoying, but look at all the other names that we've already listed off. Keep those coming in, 780-218-9999, and you can uh, keep those rolling in. Uh, good question. That was, a, that was a good question. Matt Kachuk in there. Chris Kreider's goal celebration face. It always looks like he wants to cry. Like, <laughs> We're really getting some specifics out of people who just, you can tell, just really pisses them off. What annoys you the most in sports? Chris Kreider's goal celebration face. That's good. I like holding a little bit of a grudge there. This one is in. It says, does CM Punk count? I guess. I mean, why wouldn't CM Punk count? Well, the rookie. Honestly, one of the people who annoy me the most is a guy who you guys referenced this morning about the Aki Breaky podcast and Dwight Yoakam. Whoa. I absolutely hate that guy. He is so <laughs> cringe. I do not get it. The rookie. What are you talking about? <laughs> you he's love a, Dwight he's Yoakam. A thespian. He's a He's a rockabilly country superstar. Sex appeal from the waist down, as we said. Yeah. God. Maybe it's the face that annoys. Maybe it's well, just the face. A that face could be annoying. That's a face that only a mother could say. My yes. God, that's gross. Uh, guys, for me, it's John Morosi. LOL. Yeah. All right. So uh, yeah, we got to get to the rest of the questions here, but uh, lots of uh, lots of good answers. All right. Question uh, number two. Well, we've already kind of addressed this one. We can sort of gloss over this one. Came in a little bit earlier. Guys, are you seeing a bump in views yet due to the big push on likes? We did say, yeah, we, we I mean, it directly has responded. So keep hammering the thumbs up. Give us a like. Doesn't cost you anything. Takes like literally less than a second. And uh, yeah, just hammer the, uh, hammer the thumbs up. Here, Eric, you got your phone? Yeah. Just time me. Oh, from just the moment I me. From the moment I, I, I have my hand on my mouse. Yeah. Okay. And my, my, it's not on the like yet. So you tell me when to go, and I'll tell you when I'm done, and you stop. We'll see how long it takes to like okay. the show. Ready? Go. Done. 1.15. Uh, I slowed. I stumbled on the way. Well, that's your first shot. Yeah, it I looked mean, like you, the you flight track of a Scotty Scheffler ball. do this let's, again here? Let's try one more time. Wait a second. Okay, ready? And go. Ah, we got to start again. That wasn't a good move. <laughs> okay, do it one more time. I have to lap. Uh, go. Done. Go. 1.21. Damn it. <laughs> I want to get that under one. Anyway, you will. I, you it doesn't take a it doesn't take a long time. Yeah. Smash the thumbs up. Question number three. Uh, this is a good one. What sport do you guys think Otani's interpreter bet on the most? Well, because this is because people are uh, chiming in. Oh, sumo wrestling and stuff, and giving us oh, the you other bet option. on anything. I know we're yeah. talking about the top, you know, and that's what. But yeah, so so which which den which which uh, three a.m. Uh, <laughs> You know, I, again, this has got to be some smoke-filled place where, where uh, a sport's going on that nobody's maybe even heard of yet, right? Yeah. Uh, maybe maybe, maybe he's just getting people to fight. Maybe maybe he's got an abandoned building where he just, like, you know, pays people to come in and fight, and then he bet. I, give me the most obscure sport. Maybe yachting. You know yachting. those yachting races? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> throw some fat cash down on those, maybe? I, I was going to say, or a tenor? Uh, like back in the day on the lock shop uh, with Huss's wide world of wagering. Um, the steel lumberjack competitions. How no, about no, that? No, 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 no. Uh, TSN four disc golf. Otani Ipe Ipe Masahura was huge on the disc golf betting. That's uh, that's a good one. 
pro rollerblading. <laughs> <laughs> like, give it to me. There's got to be. It's got to exist somewhere. Roller Jam never died. He lost 180 million dollars, but 176 million of it was on pro rollerblading. <laughs> pro rollerblading. Not to be confused <laughs> with the amateur circuit. That's uh, that's a good one. Dex is in and says, guys, he lost 35 mil betting on gerbils at the Transit Hotel. Yeah, that's a good one. If you know, you know. Seven eight zero two eight eight. Tommy Rubella. Guys, the interpreter lost all that money betting against the Globetrotters because he thought the generals were due. That's uh that's a good one as well. Um keep them rolling in. 780-288-9999. How did what was he betting on to lose 180 million bucks? People are saying I made it look too hard to get the to to do the like thing. Well, it was tough. Like on this other screen and that mouse is moving through the color of the video. Is it was He's I, betting I, on sport ball. Betting. <laughs> <laughs> you, you go take your child down to a game, and there's eBay sitting in the you know just <laughs> he's just he's sitting back to the wall, top row. Yeah, just, <laughs> he's sitting at the Wolf Willow Community League. And just like, what's that guy doing here? He, he, does, he doesn't units. even have a kid, yeah. <laughs> and he's just sitting there in the corner on a chair, and like six of the dads in the class are taking action, and eBay's just like. How many times? What's the over under on how long that hula hoop will yeah. roll back to me? Yeah. I got it at three point five seconds. God, how many times can little Johnny bounce that ball between his dad's hands like this? It's a place to do it, man. This is, God, that's good. I like that one. Know. That's a good one. Whoever texted was that a text or was that in the nasty chat? That was a good one. Ipe lost. I just said it. Oh, did you? That was you. Yeah. Uh, Congratulations, Brett, Brett you're going to A&W. <laughs> Two juicy ball. mamas. Yeah, sport ball. Thought he had an edge on Emily over three and a half hula hoops. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> He's got the trend sheet of like, oh man, Tommy's not good at hula hooping, but he is good at stopping the ball without falling down. That's, uh, that's good. Uh, T-Mac, the rugby guy, says, Dusty, have you not been liking your own show? I like it once a day. I unliked it, then re-liked it for the test. That's it. Ah, uh, MJS, I see where you're coming from, buddy. Betting on airport arrivals and departures. Classic Seinfeld episode. <laughs> yes. That was always, that was such a good episode. <laughs> and then Jerry, like, involved. Oh, it was so good. God, Seinfeld, man, it just, it just hits. Listen to the bell, gross bard. It tolls for the <laughs> <laughs> George. Uh, all right, Oilers and Coyotes tonight. If you missed Tales of the North, you can find it on the podcast later. If you're watching on YouTube, you can just scroll back. We hit it around uh, 6.30 today. And a memorable one as the Desert Dogs' final visit to Ice District. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the final visit. Tonight they arrive in our fair land ready to take one last beating. They've now been saved by the Salt Lake City Savior. That's a, that's a good one, too. We also refer to Gary Bettman as Little Gary, which is a nice little handle for him there. Oh, man. Waddy in Cloverdale. Earmuffs, Trev. Uh-oh. I don't think you want to hear this one. Waddy in Cloverdale. Otani's interpreter was betting on Trev to win hot takes. <laughs> he winces it. <laughs> well, you saw the moment. That Trev's heart broke yeah. there. Uh, but I will say this. Pretty funny right. text. Pretty funny text. All right. And then you we know. find out Trev's been in on it and throwing these takes. He's collecting millions here in his pocket. Yeah. Damn. All right. So what else did this his interpreter bet on to lose 180 mil? 780-218-9999. Oilers and Coyotes tonight. Let's get into your orange and blue breakfast today to get you ready for the first half of a back-to-back for the Edmonton Oilers. This is a pickered night here. Yeah, yeah. Save Stewie Skins for Saturday night yesterday. against the Vancouver Canucks. Uh, we'll get into it. Let's take a look at your line combinations. Uh, the Edmonton Oilers. Connor McDavid still listed as day-to-day. I don't think you push a day-to-day to go up uh, against the Coyotes here in the first half of a back-to-back, but we'll see. The Orange and Blue Breakfast brought to you by Mobile One and Blue Water Lubricants. Blue Water Group and Mobile One been around for 50 years now. Blue Water Group is Canada's largest independent distributor of mobile branded lubricants. They want to thank everyone for a great 50 years. If you want your vehicle to run, get it done with Mobile One, the lubiest in the biz. Dry saddle between Hyman and Nuge, Henrique, Fogel, and Kane, McLeod, Perry, and Holloway, and then Ryan with Connor Brown and Matthias Yanmark. Uh, we'll see how, how that sorts itself out. But 
McLeod Perry Holloway was better than Henrique Fogel Kane last game. Like that's that's two decent second lines. Well, the way they played, McLeod Perry and Holloway played like they were a second line. We'll see if they can do that again. And maybe against the Coyotes they can. Uh, but you've got that going for you. Options. Ekholm Bouchard Nurse. Stetcher, Kulak Deharnay. You see Stetcher uh, slide on Stetcher in here. Stetcher season. Gates a former club. Let's go. I mean, maybe maybe you mix something in there. We'll, uh, we'll see how that sorts itself out. Um, Arizona Coyotes. Kerfoot. Like, with a lot of these guys, I look at it and go, oh, that's where he plays now. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Kerfoot between Schmaltz and Keller. I like this line. I like the future of this line. Logan Cooley with Dylan Gunther. And Lawson Krause, and the other two guys. McBain with Doan, son of Shane, and Maselli. And then Yannick, Carsoni, and O'Brien on the uh, fourth line. J.J. Moser and Sean Dersey. Valamaki and former Oilers prospect Kesselring. Bring him home. And then Kolachonik and Josh Brown. That's a weird pairing. Vladislav <laughs> Kolachonik and Josh Brown. All right. Sugar and spice. Uh, Lieutenant Eric, a list of guys who aren't tough enough to play hockey tonight. Well, for the Edmonton Oilers, Connor McDavid listed as day-to-day. -day. Uh, Sam Carrick also listed as day-to-day. -day. This courtesy TSN. Over up on a daily face-off, though, Cody Cece also has that uh, DTD next to his name. So that uh, explains the Stetcher addition into that yeah. blue line group that you, uh, you mentioned there. Uh, as for the visiting Arizona Coyotes... <gasps> Nick Bukestead, day-to-day. -day. Travis Dermott, day-to-day. -day. Barrett Hayton, day-to-day. -day. Travis Boyd on the IR. Brian, Li Brian Little on the IR. Shea Weber on the IR. And Jakob Voracek also on the IR. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Weber and the, Voracek. Uh, <laughs> that's where they are, right? Uh, there we go. Um, also, uh, I can't confirm this, but I think Bukestad's on the IR with a broken heart because he can't dare play here in Edmonton. Him again. and Kesselring, bring him, bring yeah, him back. I always love uh, that. That must be the reason. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Lieutenant Eric, your key to a victory here tonight. Uh, throw rocks, sticks, or other objects towards the animal. Shout in a deep voice and maintain eye contact. Uh, if it continues to approach, back away slowly and move towards buildings or human activity. <laughs> uh, do not turn away or run. That's exactly what it says to do when you bump into a coyote? Yeah, and that's so that's, I, I would say, you know, I don't know about throwing the rocks. Maybe throwing a few sticks. Maybe maybe something comes from the bench. Maybe Knobloch. I mean, if a coyote gets close to something. you, just punch it in the face. Yeah, this is this is it. That, that's basically what I'm trying to say here. There's no turning is, and running tonight. Uh, this is this is as I said a coyote, not with a nice, uh, vibrant coat. This is this is a mangy dog. So just stay there. Throw a few rocks. Make a lot of noise, and uh, the thing will be running out of town before you know it. This is not a bear. It's this not, is even not close. a bear. It's not even an you know, elk. You know, I see. I don't know. My TikTok's all animals and stuff. And uh, sometimes I'll see people, they'll bump into a bear on a trail. And they'll just slowly walk backwards and say, hey, bear. Hey, bear. Hey, yeah. bear. Hey, bear. Like, what are you yeah, trying yeah. to talk to this? Thing? Be friendly. What's going on here? I'd have a hard time not running. I'd have a hard time not running from it. You know? I, I, and well, I know I'm not going to be able to run from it. Out, so. The outrunning. You can get be, a good start, I'm sure. No but chance. <laughs> no chance. I trip and fall for sure. Yeah. But the coyote, yeah. yeah. He's just, I mean. Leon Drysdale out there? No. Bah! <laughs> <laughs> Game day prediction tonight. Uh, let's go. Huh. Ah, you know what? Let's go. Let's go. Uh, let's go here. I'll do it. A Vander Kane goal tonight. Uh -huh. Let's do it. Let's. Uh, it's a week since he scored. Right, two against Colorado. Yeah, just a week. A Vander Kane goal tonight. You heard it first here. I'm not sprinkling it. I'm not going to bet it. I don't think. But I'll make it your game day prediction. Trev, what's so funny? What are you laughing at over there? <laughs> Sorry, Strummy put a pretty funny chat in the nasty chat. I kind of <laughs> what do you what do you say? What do you say? I don't know if I can. Uh, let me see. Uh, coyotes look like they've been eaten by a wolf and <laughs> and, and, and uh, pooped off a cliff. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's, you know what? That, that kind of feels like a joke. Zach's gonna tell us when he comes in today. <laughs> Can't wait. <laughs> He'll give you five guesses. <laughs> It's your orange and blue breakfast brought to you by Mobile One and the Blue Water Group. They've both been around for half a century. You. Incredible brands. Great to have them on board. If you want your vehicle to run, get it done with Mobile One. You'll have a lot of fun out in the summer sun. Uh, Jeremy is in. It says 540. Are we at 540 likes? All right, keep it rolling. 
That's hit 600. Dallas Aiken's eyes remix hangs in the balance this morning. He's waiting just outside the door. Like, that's <laughs> kind of where we're at right now. Hey. There you go. Oh, hello, Dallas. <laughs> Seven, look, 800 likes before 9 o'clock. Dallas Aiken's will sit in between us. <laughs> It'll be Scott Laurie wearing a Dallas Aiken's mask. But still, it'll happen. All right, let's get to... Mm, that's good for Italian Center Shop. If you're not yet picked up a Panino this week, what are you doing with your life? Italian Center Shop, mm, that's good. And uh, I do like what's happened here with the trend when people are dropping off pastries now. Like when we first sort of started here, it was just pastries from random places. Good. Like good. So we had some really good donuts dropped off along the way and stuff. Some homemade flair. But the last two pastry drop-offs we've had have been special little treats from Italian Center Shop. So people are starting to get it, which is great. And speaking of get it, pick up a house-made baguette topped with olive oil, oregano, roasted red pepper spread, then loaded with a mortadella, capicola, salami, provolone. You get two of these, you eat all weekend. You, get, you pick up two of these things, get a mild, get the hot, you eat all weekend with these two paninos. It's wrapped up in deli paper too, so you know it's easy. Easily delicious. Not a sign of a good sandwich. I Grab think. it and go. Yeah. Like, Grab it and go. Yeah. It is true. Anything wrapped in deli paper is yeah. legit. All right. Mm, that's good. We got to go to Sidney Crosby. Thousand career assists. Dragging the Penguins' carcass. Trying into a to get the Penguins into a playoff spot. And now, 10th all time in NHL scoring. Sidney Crosby. Mm, that's good. That's very impressive. And when you look at the career of Sidney Crosby, I just want to bring up the NHL all-time scoring list again because uh, we were looking at it a little bit earlier. Sid, there was that stretch for Sid when he was dealing with the concussions that you're like, where's this going to go? Because mm -hmm. it was a pretty significant problem. Like That's why the concussion conversation kind of came up because the best damn player in the league had to deal with some pretty significant symptoms for quite some time. And you're like, okay, well, what's going to happen here with, with Sidney Crosby? Uh, in the end, he gets through it, and he continues to just be outstandingly consistent for a long, long time. Sidney Crosby right now, 1,591 points in his career. Just passed Esposito last night, 1,000 assists. That's good for 10th all-time. The nine names ahead of him. Joe Sackick, Mario Lemieux, Steve Iserman, Marcel Dion, Ron Francis, Belineski, where are you at? Mark Messier, or Gordie Howe, Mark Messier, Yarmer Yager, Wayne Gretzky. Now, a part of this is, uh, just quickly, a side note, back to NHL 24. Because when Marshall plays, he plays with the all-time NHL team. And, and he, so him and the Muzz last night, they play with the all-time NHL team, and then they pick the worst team in the CHL, the Canadian Hockey League. So they're playing against a bunch of 17-year-olds. So it's hilarious. But on that all-time team, I just look at it because I'm looking at this right now. Sackick's on that all-time team. Mario's on it. Iserman's on it. Marcel Dion's on it. Gordy Howe's on it. Mark Messier's on it. Gretzky's on it. Yager is not on the NHL all-time team in NHL 24. He's second all-time in league scoring. Yager should probably be on that team. And I like Ron Francis is fifth all time. I don't expect Ron Francis to be on that team. But I, I'm surprised Yager's not on that team. Trev, how do they how do they sort this out in HL24? How yeah. do they put that team together? Solani's on the team. Why I, is Yager not on the team? I think it comes down to uh, a lot of the players have to give permission to EA. To, to be on the to, all time to be, team? Uh, well, oh. just to be on the game in general. I don't know if Yager's on... Like, because I know there's a few legends that are missing on the game, and that's kind of why. Uh, I, on the top of the, my brain, I can't really think of uh, who they are, but I, I noticed, I'm like, why why aren't these players on? And I looked into it a few years ago, and they have to give permission. Um, and I know, I think it was, it might have been Drew McGinley who wasn't put in until this year. Okay. Uh, and that's kind of why huh. he was like, ah, no, I didn't really want to be on the game. So uh, I'll have to check when that's I get gotta home. That's got to be what's up with Yager then, because, yeah. I mean, he should be in the top six on an all-time team. Um, Dr. J says is a, a 52 year old Gordy Howe destroys some poor 17 year old. It is funny seeing like all these guys. It's just like it's really bad. I played against uh, from your Detroit Vipers. I played with them. I played against them as the Lethbridge Hurricanes, and like their goalie was like a 54. Marshall's rolling out Patrick Waugh. He's a hundred rating. I'm like, man, this is not fair. I'm reading here from Brotherly Puck. 31 players still missing from the NHL 24 alumni rosters. Oh, okay. Do you have the list? Um, Gotta be. Yager. I just want to make sure this is all kind of. 
I wonder if Ron Francis is on that list or he's just disrespected so much that he wouldn't be on the team. I just want to make sure I'm reading kind of the right thing here if that's if that's kind of what we're talking it's about. It's got to be it if that's what you found. I'm seeing a lot of names here. Well, I'll give them the, give them to Patrick Marlowe. Yeah, I don't well he, he wouldn't be on the all-time no, Okay, team. Mike Bossy, Bobby Hull, Kevin Deneen, Vinny LeCavier. like I'm just going to have you seen any No, of I haven't your, seen any of these guys in here. Okay, uh, Paul Korea, Ryan Getzlaff, Peter Bondra, Duncan Keith, McGillney, Fedorov, Datsuk, Zetterberg. David Legwand, Marion Gabrick. Is Yager's name on there? Michael Renberg. I'm not seeing Yager's on here. Huh. That's why I'm kind of confused as to the... Uh... Guys, I swear there was one he was in, and they showed the uh, salute. Oh. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe he just didn't make the team. Maybe he's on. If, like, if you go play Penguins all-time alumni, maybe Yager's on there. I don't know. I'd have to, uh, I'd have to check that out. I'm not allowed to play those good alumni teams. Marshall doesn't let me play those teams. It's, it's tough. Uh, all right, seven eight zero two one eight ninety nine ninety nine. But Sidney Crosby, top ten. He's going to at least get to ninth. Um, I, you know he'd probably get like if you, how much how much does Cro- Sidney Crosby like? Let's see here. He's got fifteen hundred ninety one points right now. Sakic is fifty points ahead of him. He gets that next year, so he moves up to ninth all time in scoring next year. Mario seventeen hundred twenty three points. Iserman seventeen fifty five. Marcel Dion, 1771. Ron Francis, 1798. So does Sidney Crosby have 200 more points in him in his National Hockey League career? I would think so. That's like two seasons if he keeps playing the way he's playing. So there's a chance. I mean, 1850. He is right now like 260 points away from Gordie Howe. And if Sid has three years left, he could end up finishing fourth all time. In scoring. That would put him 37 back of Mark Messier. So he's going to continue to move up this list of, uh, of all-time greats on the point production thing. Ovechkin, by the way, who's more known for his goal scoring, is 13th all-time in points. There's two other players who are still playing today who are top 40 all-time in NHL scoring. Trev, can you name them? Uh, right now, like, it, there's two active? guys, active players. In, so there's four active guys who are in the top 40. Sid, Ovi, Two other guys. You'd have to give me a minute. Rick, you want to take oh, a guess at this? Two other active players that are top 40 all-time in scoring. And actually, I'll give that Kop- to Kopitar? Say, no, they played each other last night head-to-head. Oh, Malkin and Patrick Kane. That's it. Ah, Malkin Patrick. and Patty Kane, the other two guys. They're down lower. They are uh, 37th and 38th, but they'll be moving up here quick. They're going to check off Iggy and Turgeon and Gartner and Savard and these guys. Turgeon. Next season, they'll end up being top 20 by the time it's all said and done as well. Anyway, Sidney Crosby, mm, that's good. 1,000 assists, 10th all-time in scoring. What is he for assists all-time? Let me bring that up. Let me bring up the all-time assist leaders here. So, Wayne, 1963. <laughs> Ron Francis, second all-time in assists. God. Mark Messier. Our boy. Ray Borg. Yager, Coffey, Thornton, Oates, Iserman. Sidney Crosby's 14th all-time in assists. McDavid not on that list just yet. But when it's all said and done, we'll be having these conversations about Connor McDavid as well, no doubt about it. And it'll be interesting to see how high he ends up getting on the list as well. Like, McDavid... Does he like? I don't see why McDavid can't reach two thousand points. Like, I honestly don't. The the rate. Like, I made a video um, at the beginning of this year on my channel. Wait, you, you, and, you, wait, you have a YouTube channel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> um, and no idea. <laughs> I think it was he had to average throughout the next eight seasons like one hundred and thirty points, which. And, you know, that's eight seasons. Who's to say he doesn't play 12 more seasons? Like, I don't think that's without the realm of possibility. I, I, and I, I think I use that as a hot take. Yeah, yeah. I don't even think it's much of a hot take. So you see him settling in as the second highest scorer in NHL Absolutely. history when it's all said yeah. and with it, yeah. I mean, expansion knocking at the door, we discussed too. I more mean, weak teams, more points. To get that. Yeah, yeah. And before, but before the show started, I said, like, man, like on my memories uh, on Facebook, it, it showed, like, he three years ago he reached 500 points. Yeah, like that's and like if, now if, now he's almost yeah. at a thousand. If if he stays healthy, he takes a legitimate run at two thousand. Absolutely, I, w- I would agree with that. You're right. I I don't even know if that's a hot take. 
Like, that's just how good he is. If Connor McDavid can maintain health for the majority of his career, and that's why we're still being like, it's okay if you sit out tonight against the Coyotes. Take care like, of yourself. Okay. Not just, but as okay. Mike Johnson said, it's not just for tonight. It's for for two months of playoffs. Exactly. And then your career moving forward. Like yeah. don't 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 screw anything up here long term. Not even the short term, but the long term as well. If like I think no matter what, he gets to eighteen hundred, which would put him top five scoring all time. But if he stays healthy, and there are there are a few more 140, 150 point seasons coming here from from Connor McDavid, taking a run at two thousand. Now he'd hit two thousand. He'd still be eight hundred and fifty seven points behind Wayne. But that's still very impressive to be like the one below Wayne. Also, the other thing I want to point out with this list, the top 10 scores of all time, Wayne Gretzky, 1,487 games. Yager, 1,730 games. The Moose, 1,756 games. Gordie Howe, 1,767 games. Ron Francis, 1,731 games. Marcel Dion, 1,348 games. Iserman, 1,514. Sackick, 1,378. Sidney Crosby's done it in 1,269. Mario Lemieux, 915 games to get 1,723 points. I mean, if Mario would have even, if Mario could have somehow got 1,500 games, he'd be at that 24, 2,500 point. Think what everything Lemieux went through, man. Freak. Absolute freak. Uh, all right. 780-218-9999. That's, mm, that's good for the Italian center shop. Go pick up a Panino. If you, haven't, if, you, if you know, you know. But if you haven't tried one yet, we're telling you, Go try it. You're going to absolutely love it. 32 likes away from the Eyes remix. So keep those uh, keep those thumbs up rolling in here as we try to take a run at 600. The streak of 400 has now hit six shows in a row and is the new standard. Uh, so that's that's exciting. But we're 30 away. We do have a gift certificate to give away to Sobeys and Safeway Liquor. If you want that bad boy, boom. Make it happen. Always nice to get that on a Friday heading oh, into a weekend. That'd hey, be you good. Me? That'd be good. The guy who won last week came in and got it that well, day. That's what, yeah, that's what you do. Yeah. I mean, your your weekend good, or maybe yeah. just your Friday night, depending on who you are. That was uh, that was good. So if you are listening on TuneIn or iHeart, tell your friends seven eight zero two one eight ninety nine ninety nine is where you'll be able to text in on that one. I think we're trending towards hitting the uh, the Aiken song before nine o'clock today. Do it before Scott. Let's. Uh, what's that? Do it before Scott. Well, if we don't hit it before Scott, we are going to talk about that soccer team that he really likes. Ah. So we have to know. Just kidding. We won't. Uh, all right. We got Sobeys and Safer Liquor Beer of the Week coming up. Let's get things set up for Scott to slide on in here. Tommy the Wrench. Tommy and, the uh, wrench. Is Tommy the Wrench in the house? Tommy the Wrench. Tommy the Wrench. Hey, Tommy, <laughs> like the channel. Tommy, you should sub. Hit the sub. <laughs> Sobeys and Safeway Liquor Beer of the Week. On the Nielsen Show, only on EdmontonSportsTalk.com. Sobeys and Safeway Liquor Beer of the Week. Also available as its very own podcast on all podcasting platforms. If you're not yet searched it out, we do that for all of our beer lovers who hate us otherwise and just love this guy. Um, you I do can, love you somebody can, listens find... just for that podcast. Yeah, that's just it. That. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. One guy's just like, man, uh, so do you do anything besides this Beer of the Week podcast? <laughs> nope. Nothing else. Uh, you find it all your pod, plat, podcasting platforms. Uh, just search Sobeys and Safeway Liquor Beer of the Week podcast. You can find it over there. Uh, Scotty, how you doing, buddy? Fantastic. Yeah, some weird algorithm. That's the only thing they see. Edmonton Sports Talk. Yeah, that's it. Just, just, just a beer of the week. That's a weird name for yeah. a beer of the week podcast on Edmonton Sports Talk. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All, all they do is drink. <laughs> yeah. That's the algorithm just keeps pushing out. They only watch videos of beer and stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's all yeah. you see. Yeah, hey, no. by, the, by the way, yeah. uh, you know whose birthday it is today, right? It is. I just texted him yeah, uh, right uh, now. I, I messed up. Our the buddy, Hawk? our yeah. buddy, you know, you know, the Hawks. So here's the thing. The, my buddy Boom's birthday is in April. Okay. The the buddy that we have, the Hawk, you know, Hawk, yeah. he looks like Boom. His birthday's in April. Okay. Haji's birthday's today. And my birthday's in April. Oh. So we have this whole like April birthday group. Nice. Uh, none of us like each other. No. But, uh, 
Yeah, anyway, it's so, just I, so I text Audrey today because our group chat that we have from that Mexico golf trip, like yeah. eight years, no, 10 years ago or whatever it was. Uh, I texted today. I said, hey, Haji, happy belated, buddy. And he goes, it's today. <laughs> I was like, uh-oh, sorry, man. Like, he's going to hate me now. Oh, yeah, yeah. Anyway, Haji, it's always safe. We're like, happy birthday, buddy. I, I sent a, a, a family guy pic of, you know, a, a Peter at the end of the bed. He's like, your wife spent, you know, $200 on lingerie, got her hair done, everything, and all she sees at the end of the night is that. And it's just it's like just, this, this gross mess. Gross mess, yeah. which is Haji. Well, that's what happens when you turn 57, <laughs> Haji. So, yeah. uh, I thought he was 60 this year. Oh, he looks Ooh, 60. He looks 60. <laughs> he looks 60. Yeah. Uh, all right, what do we got? What all are we doing here? Okay, we're doing analog. Uh, oh. Perfect. Perfect. We've, done We've done analog before. We've done analog before. And I love, again, you know, top-notch cans. Yeah, great cans. Top-notch cans. Um, we're going to try a few that we haven't tried, which is really good. Uh, we're going to do a Retro Styles Cream Ale, which is like, you know, certified dad beer. It's okay. like dad beer approved. It's lawnmower beer. It's perfect. This beer wears white sketchers. Exactly. Yeah. With, with, the, with, the, with the hard bottom slip on where you don't have to bend down. Have you, you seen, seen that? I have seen that now. <laughs> Brilliant. Dude, yeah, I, I know. Haji's got like eight pairs. Because I slip into these. Like I'm wearing Skechers right now and I slip into these, but they still bend a little bit. Yeah. Those new ones have like an invisible shoehorn inside. Built in. Yeah. 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 Shoe, shoe technology guys, in 2024 hey. is just yeah. insane. Yeah. How old, you can are, have how old are you? I'm, I'm getting <laughs> one for sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they're fantastic. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, so this is the Retro Styles Cream Ale. We're going to do this one. We got It starts at a tavern. Uh, we've got a uh, pixelated pilsner. And then the beer of the week is the actual uh, Gozes and Goblins, but it's the seventh version. So they kind of changed this Seven one. Seventh version. Seventh version. Oh, it's yeah. watermelon. It's a watermelon sour, um, which I, I'm sure we haven't had a watermelon beer before. I do you. like watermelon, though. You've had watermelon. Like to eat watermelon. I, was, I uh, like eating it. Yeah. I like drinking the white claws. I, I like watermelon. There we go. Yeah. I, well, I don't like the uh, I don't like the seeds in the watermelon. You're a seedless. A, a seedless, seedless watermelon. Seedless watermelon. Yeah. watermelon. Yeah. Right, unless you're outside. I mean, if you're if you're like at a pic, if you're outside, you spit them out. I'm okay. Yeah, I'm okay fine, with it there. But it's if I'm home, yeah. but what a pain in the butt. It is. Yeah. Yeah. We're lazy. Uh, yeah. Uh, Tommy, uh, Tommy's uh, mum's birthday is today as well. Oh, what? Jeez. Eva G. So, oh well, hey, oh, cheers! My goodness, a cheers I, I to Eva G. But not Haji. No, never. Yeah, yeah, yeah cheers. cheers. There we go. Cheers. cheers. Oh, mm. easy, yummy, delicious cream ale. Yep. Wow. Five percent. Um, that's really tasty. It's got a slight hop to it, but but just very awesome. minimal. Very, very minimal. Yeah, you can hop. jump over just, that thing. That's yeah. a, t a really, 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 really good. I like cream that ale. Hey. I know it's it's very good. Have we tried a lot of cream ales? I feel like yeah, if, yeah. But this one really kicks. Some, sometimes like sometimes they're a little darker. Um, this okay. one this one's yeah, a little lighter. Light. Uh, in terms Confusing of the cream to ale. the eye too, when you hear cream and ale, yeah. it's pretty a thin. Like I mean, I'm pretty. Mm. Uh, yeah, well, and I think I think that's a thick beer. That's real nice for sure. And I think that that, that kind of dad approved stamp on it, you know, that it will let people try that a little little quicker. It's it's. I mean, the cans phenomenal with the rest of the retro styles. Cans in the biz. It's pretty cool. They're they're I they're bang them. on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I like on their website too. When you look at them, they they unfold the, the label so you can see it all. So oh, like, you nice. know, usually when you yeah. go on, the, on, you just see the can. Well, they, so because there's, there's so much going on. We with these we got things. a couple of the six o'clocker labels. Yeah, exactly. on yeah. the uh, fridge over there. Yeah. It's kind of it's art, yeah. right? It's like nice yeah, we've been in Absolutely. a few breweries and they have them framed. They've got all of their labels framed. Yeah. It's on their wall. It's kind of a neat way to kind of remember them all. So Okay, so let's do let's this, this is a pub amber ale. So this is it always starts in a tavern, which is very very true. Um, so you know, like this one here we're going to have um, a hybrid kind of an English brown, a <laughs> uh, little bit of touch of rye malt. Uh -huh, okay. So we're going, you know, Five and a half percent alcohol. Again, all these beers are very, very drinkable. Um, nothing too hoppy, too strong in the alcohol level. Um, you get fourteen ninety nine for these beers. Great priced, but and really, really nice. A little bit of brown sugar, a little bit of caramel in this one. What, what would you say is the difference between a pub and a tavern? I feel like a tavern is smaller. Okay, I was gonna say made of wood. Yeah, like, I, think, like, I feel like tavern has like a swing well, doors. Door would be swing great, doors, but it is. I mean, we don't see those anymore, but. Yeah, somebody let us know. Hit us up in the uh, 780-218-9999 in the nasty chat. I imagine like a tavern being wooden. Yeah, dark. Yeah, yeah, darker. Dark. Yeah. Stone, like wooden stone. Maybe, like, you know, a little maybe, bit of stone. yeah. Yeah, this looks a little older, maybe. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. a fun question. Yeah. Uh, cheers to uh, <laughs> Connor McDavid's lower body. <laughs> and LBI. There you go. I do have it here uh, from the uh, courtesy hambonepittsburgh.com. <laughs> If you can't trust them. I mean, a, a, a pub is an establishment that serves alcoholic drinks, whereas a tavern typically serves food and is open to the public. And they don't serve booze at well, a they, tavern? they do both. Oh. But the pub is just kind of your, just so, booze. Oh, so but a tavern, impressive. like a kid, huh. could, maybe a kid could go into a tavern. Yeah, that type of thing. I would, I would have said the opposite. 
Like in my, like, I'm glad you say that too. Yeah, yeah. Hambone Pittsburgh. Yeah. I don't go to a tavern too often. It's always no, the pubs. It's yeah. always the pubs. But a tavern be something you go with it. Oh well, the boys. I guess we'll never know. I guess we should probably try them all. Still up for debate. <laughs> <laughs> let's go try a few and see where we end up. Okay, so the next one here. Let's go with the pil- the pixelated pilsner. Uh, this one here is a Czech style pilsner, so we're using kind of that Czech um, malt. Uh, this uses a, a lemon drop hop, so you're going to get a little bit, a little bit of citrus. A lemon for drop it. hop. Lemon drop hop. Um, uh, it's, so the, the, the ingredients are great. Like um, so yeah, this one again, crisp, uh, very, very approachable. Five point two percent. All of these beers, super easy to drink. Very, very. There's nothing scary about them. Just very flavorful and and, and a wide range of styles. Um, I like this one too. It's, it's a pilsner. Cheers to uh, Sidney Crosby. For becoming top ten all time in the scoring, kid. hitting the a kid. thousand assists. Yum, mm. Pilsner. That's good. Yeah, clean. It's a pill. Yeah, pill. No, that's good. Yeah, crisp. See, you know, nice and clear when it pours. Five tool beer. Yeah, it, for sure. Any time yeah. you want it. Yeah, yeah. Any any situation. Yep. That was hard that work, or maybe if you haven't done any work at all during exactly. the day, and you're sitting around. You can have you're thinking about like, doing hard work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that that beer is Billy Bean in high school. Remember, he was a five two player, player in Moneyball. Yeah. Billy, you're going to be yeah. five two player. You're be a five I just two watched player. that movie again. That's why we think oh, you God, should yeah, get started yeah. with us. Every yeah, night. I just watched Every it too. It was on TV. The what? The what? <laughs> the what? We need to re- recreate him in the David in the yeah, The yeah. what? <laughs> yeah, buddy, it's a great movie. That's why I, I always got good Billy Bean references, you know? Like, being, imagine like seeing that on TV and you're one of those old guys at the table and he's just disrespecting. Like, oh. like, like oh, he's like, I hated that day. Yeah. I remember that. He comes in and like, you're the scouts, you've done all this work. Yeah. And this, you know, you're evaluating players if they have a good looking girlfriend or not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Come on, man. He's got no confidence. Yeah, no confidence. Why? <laughs> he's got an ugly girlfriend. Yeah. What? What's that mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Great movie. Okay, so now the last one here is the Gozas and Goblins seventh version. This is a fruit, it's a sour Goza. So, uh, you know, Gozas usually have a little bit of saltiness to them, a little bit of some of them have a little spiciness. So, it's, it's a sour beer with a little extra kind of going on. Um, but it's, it's a really good summer beer. Uh, Sweet, tar, juicy kick. It, I like I like sours. I like gozas. Mm. Uh, we'll get you there. I hope it goes it down good. Yeah. <laughs> but um, bumps. <laughs> That's pretty bad. <laughs> uh, sorry, guys. It's class, Sketchers and, and dad jokes and dad yeah, approved yeah, yeah, beer. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, we got a, we got a trend Fit the here. theme here. Yeah, I think so. I, if this one. If this is the beer of the week. Fourteen ninety nine. Um, yeah, uh, people that like analog beer, they're going to be rushing out to get this one. Nice. Uh, it's it's a it's a great version. All right. Well, it cheers. To hitting 600 likes this Holy morning me. in the nasty hey, chat. Hey. Cheers to all you nasties. Wow. That's outstanding There's stuff. There's no limit, Trevor. Yeah, exactly. Oh, Good job, yeah. what, Oh, wow. Well, there you go. Oh, <laughs> I was about to talk, and then my, my palate was like, wait a second. You're not ready I'm to talk yet. I'm getting abused over here. You are like, not ready to talk yet. me another one. I got to yeah. pay attention to this. Yeah. 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 I didn't realize what was about to, was about to happen. Warhead here. Kind yeah. of so, so, I didn't realize what was coming there. So taste that one again now Now that you're kind of over that initial shock. And you're going to taste that okay, watermelon so tell me what we're tasting. Watermelon for sure. Watermelon. It's still there. I know. At the end. And usually watermelon, wow. it kind of goes away. This one here sticks with you a little bit. It kind of, It's almost like the top back of your palate. Yeah, yeah. I kind of feel like, these sours are getting perfected too. Like, I love like sours. They're, but they're not an uncut. We're not going, Ugh. No, like, you know? they're not awful. It's not making you pucker, but it's but it's strong, but yep. it's, it's palatable. There's again. so much flavor. Yeah. And you, again, I, sours on a hot day, they're so thirst, like thirst quenching. They're, they're, they're great. Awesome. Yeah, just sitting and Great sipping summer beers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so. All right. Well, cheers. Cheers to this, because I think in the, uh, I think in the playoffs and shows, we might be able to take a run at a thousand likes. Honestly, in a, a at the morning after a playoff game, I think we might be able to do it. So cheers to the support. Yeah. But anti-cheers to Zach to come wearing a Shane Doan jersey That's today. weird. That's odd. Wow, that's strange, <laughs> isn't it? <What> a guy. <laughs> that's bizarre. Man. It's really uh, good. One of those for the hangout, please. It's really, really good. There is one there. Take it over. Yeah, I, right I will. Right I will be. Yeah, that's it. Right um, there. If I can. But yeah, yeah, but that's sour. Like it's there. Wow. But with all but the flavor, it, but there's not much of, sour there. It gets taken away by the flavor. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's not pucker sour. We we've had some, and that's what their intention is. Like it's it's to be as and sour, fine, and, that's and that's your great. Goal. Yeah, and, yeah, that, yeah. and that's great. But this one's not that. This one is. It says fruit beer, Ooh. and I think it's it really is closer to that more. Um, you know, t- fruit beer sour rather than a sour fruit beer. Yeah, 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 yeah. that's true. Yeah. Um, so really, really great beer. And speaking of, play- speaking of, of playoffs, we do have the 
We have a promotion starting. Or oh, can we? Uh, we can. We, I, got, I was worried. I wasn't sure. If we yeah, you're good. Okay, okay, okay. We'll we told tell the we, people. We, we told our stores here. So we're doing the six o'clock or logger for the entire playoffs. So that you know, April eighteenth start. Yeah, till whenever. Till mid June. Till, till mid June, and <laughs> till the Oilers. Hopefully, God willing, <laughs> raise the cup. Raise the cup. Uh, six o'clock or logger. Twelve ninety nine. Let's go! My God, twelve ninety. <laughs> That's a dollar <laughs> cheaper. Late, late hour conch. We never do that. We never do, but I'm doing it. I'm doing it. So that's 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 a dollar cheaper than we were when we launched it at Beer of the Week. It's we cheaper were, than we when were, it launched. We were thirteen ninety nine when we launched. Oh my god! So we're going twelve ninety nine with Alley Cat uh, in in all of our Alberta stores. We're gonna have stacks of it in, in the Edmonton area. We're gonna, we we told our stores to order big. Yeah. So you'll see it in all the Alberta the Woo! Edmonton area stores. Twelve ninety nine. Twelve ninety nine. Are you the out of your place? We're crazy. That's, that's, we are crazy. That is crazy. All right. So yeah. six o'clock at Lager four packs. Twelve ninety nine for the entire playoffs. Look, yeah. say a number. I think he gets a vault request this morning as well. I think well, that, yeah, I mean, he can't. I know no, they're coming the, up the against it. The yeah. And we hit the six hundred likes. So we had to play Dallas Aikens Eyes remix. But man, that is yeah. exciting. It's exciting, and we're gonna have a promotion with Alley Cat and Riverhawks in our stores. So there'll be a QR code. Win tickets to Riverhawks. It's all coming so together. If, while the sale is on, you can go 100%. in. percent. QR code. QR it, code, code it. Win tickets to Riverhawks, where we're hoping the six o'clock or longer will also be available. Exactly. My God, you it's guys, just all coming together. Hey, hammer the thumbs up for that. Yeah. Hammer six hundred. Be I'm, damned. 700 likes, 6 o'clock or longer, yeah. on special, twelve ninety nine for the entire, entire playoffs. Entire playoffs. Man, if this thing goes six games and they lose in the first round, I'm going to be pissed. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be pissed. There's got to be you a got, deep run here this year. you drink your sores away with, with 12 percent yeah. right? yeah. yeah. Tipper, right, this is Tipper Woodsman says, I love this man. <laughs> <laughs> I love this man. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, no, this is exciting. This is, uh, this is really good. Um, all right, let's get into the wrap for William Huff. If you want your place to look as good as ours, William Huff, they've been doing this since 1972. I mean, they are <laughs> terrific. They make us look really, really, really good. Check them out, WilliamHuff.com. We actually, I got to get in touch with Bruce because we need a tent. We need to get mm. an Edmonton Sports Talk 10 by 10 tent. So like we're expanding the, the promotion game, you know? Like so it. we got to get into that a little bit. Yeah, thanks for this. You know what? As much as I like that watermelon one. Yep. This cream ale stands up. It's my favorite one. Yeah. This is a delicious yeah. beer. Absolutely yeah. delicious beer. I, I knew that. That one, that one, and then this one. It starts in a tavern with yeah. mine. Somebody said a tavern has pickled eggs in it. That might be the difference. Or a curling club. That, I mean, oh, yeah. it's like right there. Yeah. A hotel attached or yes. something. Something along yes. those lines. There's yeah. got to be something it's that regional. separates them. How yeah. do you know? Right. If you, yeah. This if ham bone Pittsburgh yeah. doesn't know what they uh, do. Pennsylvania is a totally different world. Eh? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like if you're starting something up, you're like, is this a pub or a tavern? You have to know. You got to like know. You got to know somewhere. So. I feel like they've got steins in a tavern. Like I think there's certain things. Yeah, you yeah, yeah. Bring back the saloon, damn it. Yeah. Give me the swinging doors. Sawdust on the floor. Somebody show me peanuts. Well, Cook County Saloon is called a saloon. That's true. But there's no other saloons. It's just a standard, you know. Like a saloon that's a pub. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's not, not a dance like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. dance. Guy yeah. That would be fun. I think ding, 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 ding. When you walk in, he stops. Yeah. And then he gets looks at you. Yeah. Look, like if anybody <laughs> if anybody guy? decides to open up a saloon, instead of having our old timey poker tournament here, we'll yeah. do it at the saloon. Absolutely. For sure. We'll do it at yeah, the saloon. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? I should actually talk. I know the guys who run Cook. We should see if they could set it's like because they're not wow. open like they're busy nights where they're closed where we could get old timey poker tournament. That would be great. There's an abandoned building here in the West End that we could Is there? But imagine like walking into Cook County Saloon in old Cowboy gear to play a poker tournament. I've never been in there. Neither have I. Yeah. <laughs> we don't. Trav, have you been to cook? <laughs> yeah, I actually have. <laughs> Good. I don't remember it, but Trav. it was fun. <laughs> wow. Okay, well, here, uh, let's, so get to the, don't let's get to the dance. <laughs> let's get to the rap. Uh, not, here's what I learned today. Line dances. Only at home. I learned that these two guys haven't been to cook, <laughs> and I've also learned that the uh, 6 o'clock or lager is going to be twelve ninety nine. For the playoffs, and it's already moving really well. You oh, guys yeah. put that on at twelve ninety nine. It's it's it lights out. Right? It's lights. It's it's been. Can I issue an apology right now to all of Molson staff. Canadian <laughs> for for taking such a significant part of the beer market from you? Calgary Glenn <laughs> says, "I love Scott." <laughs> yeah, people are obsessed. I, 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 you just, I love you too. You it's ate a the great wand day. Yeah, I love them yeah. too. It's a great day. What yeah. did you guys learn today on the show? Anything? Uh, well, uh, people are chiming in left, right, and center. Uh, Paris Jewelers inbox and nasty chat. Bryson DeChamp was on the three D printed clubs, eh? <laughs> what? Apparently, he's using. He's playing with clubs that are 3D printed. That's what a nerd. At Again, home? I, I, like the shambles is... always been a nerd. This is yeah. the most nerdy thing ever. Maybe, maybe this is just kind of. What's next? Rashad gets 3D printed clubs. Of course, for his uh, simulator. That's of course. Of course. By yes. the way, we do have a fifty dollars gift card to Sobeys. Text beer me. Unless a bunch of you are already Corey texting B's beer been me. So. Doing it. Yeah. <laughs> <Ten minutes laughs> ago, he's, he Corey, calm story. down. Yeah. Text beer me right now to seven eight zero two one eight ninety nine ninety nine. All right, let's get to your sound of the day today. Then we will get to the text of the day. Sound of the day. You did it. 
it. You got to uh, 600 likes. Good we job. We said we'd get to the Dallas Aikens remix. If we got there, we did 627. Hey, if you haven't given us a thumbs up yet, and you want to, let's do it right now. Here we go. Dallas Aikens, sound of the day. <sighs> eyes. You know what? I saw it in his eyes. Eyes. It's fun to watch his eyes. Eyes. And, you know, he narrowed his eyes. He's been uh, a horse. His eyes narrow. I saw it in his eyes. He loves his eyes. Eyes. It's going in the net. Horse eyes. People were highly critical of his eyes. His eyes narrow. Eyes. Eyes. Oh, Everybody know. There we go. Eyes. eyes. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Uh, I like all the eyes emojis yeah, in the chat. I never thought about really doing that before. Yeah, yeah. I don't even know. I don't even know how to do that. How do you do? How do you do those things in there? That's, that's well, it's just right here. Yeah, click the cool. eyes. Cool. I'm gonna click a camel. I'm gonna put a camel in the chat right now. A wrench. <laughs> a camel wrench. There we go. Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, text of the day today. Go to the net. We had a lot of. Uh, we had a lot of good text today. This one I think probably ended up being my favorite. It was about the Otani betting. Waddy in Cloverdale. Waddy. Sorry, Trev. He's going to win a gift certificate to A&W. Damn it. Two, <laughs> two juicy mamas. Two juicy mamas for nine ninety nine up until April 14th. So that's today, tomorrow, and then Sunday. And then we've got a new promotion that we'll talk about next week. But two juicy mamas at A&W for nine ninety nine. drive throughs open 24 hours. Otani's interpreter was betting on Trev to win hot takes. <laughs> Can I quit hot takes? Is that how that works? <laughs> you don't quit. You get a dub and it'll be celebrated for I'm years. Trying. I'm trying. <laughs> trying. I'm trying. I'm literally That's trying. So okay, Connor oh. Brown. Uh, <laughs> all right, there you go. Waddy and Cloverdale, congratulations, man. You went text of the day for A and W. Hangout's coming up right away. Eric, you're going to take one of these bevies over there and slide in on the hangout Maybe today? Me too. Be oh, wow. Well, that will be a good thing right there. <laughs> Fresh one. All right, Scott, thanks for coming in, man. Anytime. And uh, hey, thanks for putting the 6 o'clock logger on special Listen, at 1299. My pleasure. Man. Look at this guy. You're a hero. <laughs> Not all heroes wear capes. Some of them are balding, middle-aged men. <laughs> That's accurate. <laughs> <laughs> all right, for YouTube, Trev, Scott from Sobeys, Lieutenant Eric, I'm Dustin Nielsen. Hangout's coming up. And, uh, hey, thanks for all the support. We appreciate it. Enjoy your weekend. I'll be back with Lock Shop at 11, Oil Stream at noon as well. Tommy's got pre and post tonight as well. So uh, lots going on here in Edmonton Sports Talk. Have a great day and take it easy.